percent cheaper and you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy through hymns you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ed medication that's best for you discreet shipping if prescribed a 100 percent online process and a range of treatment options including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands at up to 95 percent off ed is personal and at hymns so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Nothing is more important than your safety and security. Trust the local team at Audio Video Security Solutions to handle your home or commercial surveillance system. Mitchell Fisher and his team can provide all the necessary equipment and installation so you can monitor your home or business 24 hours a day. Get 24-hour live viewing, recording, and playback while avoiding any cloud storage fees. Multiple different systems are available for demo at their showroom on Jefferson Highway. Visit them online at avssla.com. That's avssla.com. Need steel decking fast? Choose Southern Steel Decking, Louisiana's premier metal decking supplier. Our lightning fast 24-hour turnaround ensures you get your decking when you need it. And we deliver statewide. Visit southernsteeldecking.com. That's southernsteeldecking.com. Why do billion-dollar insurance companies regularly delay and deny valid claims? Because that's how they got to be billion-dollar insurance companies. If you've been injured, I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16. 7969 WNXX Jackson KNXX Donaldsonville and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers LA2112681 Offices in Baton Rouge Good morning at 7 a.m. here on Wednesday, March 20th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 70. In hour one of today's show, we'll recap LSU's NIT loss to North Texas and LSU baseball's midweek win over Louisiana Tech. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Here we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome in Wednesday, March 20, 2024. T-Bob, Jake. Alondra Taylor hanging out with you today. I uh, hope you're all having a great morning thus far. Uh, how's everyone doing today, guys? Feeling good? Feeling juiced up? Ready to go? Another day of taking and sports. You got live MLB on. Uh, live from Seoul right now. That's kind of cool to have on the screen for sure during the uh, during the show here. We have some college baseball to talk about. I want to get into Matt McMahon's Will Wade problem. Um, how are we feeling, though, this morning? Uh, another day, another morning where the that groundhog is full of ish. Nah, bro. But I mean, we're back. We're it here. Ended, ended up a beautiful spring day yesterday, as it will again today. Um, oh, were you I got, outside still yesterday? Still a little chilly yeah, throughout yeah. the day. Bro, what are you talking about? What are you, it was chilly I'm throughout not, the day. I'm not, we're I not, went we're on a run, and that are, run yeah. was like, I was. Y'all are taking this Nose was running a little bit. Until it's yeah, a another, bloody pulp like the yellow. No, it's literally cold. Practice. I don't know what you I've want been, from us. T-Bob, I've been more with you. last night. It felt incredible. I've been more with you when they were. All I know is that yesterday, I got to work, and it was cold. I left LSU last night, still cold. So yesterday was chilly. Whatever. I'm not even. I can't. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him say smart things um unbelievable uh, there's three people in right. here that aren't general studies uh majors that's true that feel like we are right in this ha, okay yes um you're right the what is it the kinesiology and mass com majors hey i was mass to, com i'm i'm yeah, almost a doctor the kinesiology and mass com majors yeah. are going to intellectually lord over me yeah because mass com <laughs> has to have like a whole bunch of you just gonna hate on physical therapists right now uh, yeah wow are you gonna call yourself a physical therapist because you got a kinesiology degree from lsu that's what i went to school for uh vastly different i think to get across I'm that basically PT an english teacher and 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 to yeah. collect a kines degree yeah um anyway god ridiculous place to start um let's start with lsu basketball then 
because uh, they fall in the NIT last night to North Texas, 84-77. Um, Taylor's fault. Yeah, Taylor worked. Yeah, the he game. was on the board. So way to go. I mean, and he look, said man. they were going to lose yesterday. I got it. Well, look, I got it. I mean, when you they, left. To Taylor's point, they weren't in great form. Uh, they haven't been in great form since that four or five streak that they had. Also, I mean, it's the NIT. It's it's kind of a bad spot to be in where it mattered to this program, and it's nice that they made the NIT. Uh, I got to be honest, though. I didn't watch, right? I've, I've never watched an NIT game in my life, and unfortunately that didn't change yesterday. Um, wow. Sh- shout out to have, – have you? Did you? Front runner. Did you? I watched a little bit of it. Do you – do you ca- – a mm, little bit of it seems like the most noncommittal way that you could also say that watched, you're engaged um, in that game. Also watched – Richmond was in the NIT. Saw some of that. Uh, did you bet it? Uh, no, I mean I'm a degenerate, but I'm had to step too far. Um, I don't know. Look, that is a Jimmy Ott territory of betting. The knit, I guess, is for some people, but uh, as I say, like my I'm with you on my this children one. with various foods. It's not for me. Um, <laughs> but but again, you know, I get it. There's value in this game for the program. Um, you're going against the defending knit champions. In North Texas, and no, uh, right, no. unfortunately, you end up falling. Jordan Wright did everything he could. He had a great game, 25 points, six boards, four assists, two steals. Trey Hannibal, another great game. Kind of the classic rhythm of an LSU game this year in which they get down big, make a huge late surge, and then um, this time they couldn't get it done, right? And, and unfortunately, that's like a dangerous game to play. If that's going to be your rhythm game in and game out, uh, you're going to end up on the losing side of things as much as you do the winning, right? And, and so that's why you finish 17 and 16 on the year. Um, anything to say on the game itself? Because I think the thing to more get into here, and by the way, you see that Will Wade audio uh, right there, Alondra? Uh, have that ready to go. It's a video. Okay. Sorry, have that video ready to go with audio. But um, I, I want to get more of the season, but any takes on last night's game before he gets to the season? I'm kind of like... You are. I mean, you you look at North Texas, and they won that tournament just a year ago. And it's a team that you already played, so they had you know a scouting report on you, and they just look like a team that was more ready in that moment in the NIT to go out there. And they, again, knowing the tournament, it looked like they knew the tournament. And you did kind of limp to the finish line, but you yeah. did what you had to do to be 500 in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Now, there were some sketchy moments against some some bad teams like Mizzou, mm-hmm. but you did do enough, and uh, you know, just came to an end. You made a comeback, like you said, like you always do, but it wasn't enough, and still going to be a successful season for Matt McMahon. Any other takes on the game? Yeah, you know, when you look at the box score, you're like, how did LSU lose this game? They did everything well. They actually shot 100% from the free throw line. The problem is they attempted 12 free throws. They were not nearly aggressive enough. What's the big stat they always say? Attempt, make more free throws than the other team attempts. That's what North Texas did. They were 15 of 23, which is not great from the line. But they attempted 23 free throws. You attempted 12. Everything else... The second chance points is really what did LSU in. North Texas won that 17 to 9. And that goes back to the post play, right? They've I mean, been giving up offensive boards all year long. Yeah, and that goes back to the post play. Now, credit Hunter Dean. I mean, he came off the bench, 11 points, five rebounds. He was solid, but I mean, look at, look at your guys. Jalen Reed, zero rebounds. Will Baker, a seven footer who's going against the team whose biggest player is six foot nine, one rebound. I mean, you just you just got dominated on both ends. You had five points, one rebound. I mean, you got to have more from your post. That was the issue all year long. It, it kind of started the opposite, right? And we were always like, hey, if Matt McMahon wants to have a successful team, he's always been good with guard play. Yeah. You started getting that guard play with a Jordan Wright, with a Jalen Cook when he was in there with Trey Hannibal. Yeah. But then your post play suffered. Derek Fountain, Jalen Reed, Will Baker, Hunter Dean, you name it. They haven't been up to par all year long, and it – it showed up against a scrappy team that knows how to win close games. Me and Jake talked about it after you left. Like, this is a battle-tested team. They played a really good Florida Atlantic team and lost by six points in the AAC tournament a couple days ago. They know how to win close basketball games, and that's what happened. So, uh, that's what happened in last night's game. But now I want to look at the season as a whole because I think there's a pretty interesting and uh, deeply recognizable dynamic at play in Louisiana college basketball right now, where, look, all in all, as we said, if you're being objective, a good season for LSU basketball. Like we said, 
Second largest conference turnaround in the country uh, to South Carolina. When I mean, you're talking about the seven game improvement that you had um, in, in the major power six, excuse me, in the, in the major conferences. Um, one you should be proud of. Um, one that is a step in the right direction. But it is impossible not to see what is going on over there in Lake Charles and McNeese and what Will Wade is doing and not think that Mac McMahon has a Will Wade problem. It's it's that classic nice guy versus bad guy dynamic, right? McMahon's nice. He has a great job. He holds the door for you, treats you kindly. Your parents love him. It's fine in bed. But there's Wade, the bad boy. Treats you like dirt, but you can't help sticking to him like mud, right? He's in a little trouble with the law. He cheated on you, but damn, if you don't think about him in bed still this day. And the worst part about it, or maybe the best, is that Wade knows it, right? Wade left you shattered, and yet you still think about him. He is the ex that you cannot get over, even though you have this really nice guy who's done Good things for you. Objectively good things for you. And yet you're just thinking about the bad boy down the road. And it's because of audio like this. This is Will Wade from his introductory press conference at McNeese. Great to start the largest turnaround in college basketball this next season. We're going to go from 23 losses to 23 plus wins next year. Remember I said that. We're going to start that today. We're going to start that today. And we're going to... We're going to all do it together. And I can't wait to... From 23 losses to 23 plus wins. Uh, they just went 30-3. and three. They won the Southland Tournament. They make the tournament for the first time since 2002. Jake McNeese had had 11 losing seasons in a row. 11 in a row. And on the day when he takes over, a 23-loss team says, we're going to win 23-plus. And then they go 30-3. and three. They're 10th in the country in three-point percentage. They're third in the country in steals per game. And now Will Wade's one of the most attractive candidates for any major job basically in the entire country. It is, again, if Wade did not exist, you would feel very solid about Mac McMahon and where this program is going. But it's 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 just I, I, I feel that it's overshadowed by Wade's success. And the fact that you had him and you had to get rid of him for something that seems laughable now. It's, look, and... Uh, I still enjoy Will Wade. I, I, Will Wade's not somebody that I certainly don't hold a grudge against. Uh, he always came yeah. on the show with us. He was always uh, I've talked with him recently. Like That is somebody that I'm going to root for, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm going to. But I don't think it's the same. I don't think you can compare the same because like is going to play a different schedule than McNeese. So like, if you're looking at the record of it, now what Will's done in Lake Charles is incredible. It is incredible. I don't want to take anything away from that. It's a bad basketball program, and he takes them to the NCAA tournament as a 12, not a 16 seed, Yeah, as a 12. That's about as well as you can position yourself at a, as a team from the Southland Conference, as a 12 seed, and that's what they've done, and they have a winnable 12-5 matchup against Gonzaga. So, like, it is incredible, but let's not forget, Matt McMahon was 31-3 and his last year at Murray State. Mm-hmm. So, same situation, same record, at that well, level, made it to the NCAA second round. How many years had he been at Murray State at that point, though? No, and, and that's fair. It was, it was his third year. Because this, no, this is the this is the the nineteen game turnaround for McNeese, regardless of like power conference or not. The nineteen game turnaround ties the largest in college basketball history. It's incredible. It huh? is incredible. But I don't think we're like looking at the same thing. Like we don't have to compare Will Wade and Matt McMahon. Maybe what, not. what Matt McMahon took over was a team that at the time had nobody on the roster, not one single person. And one thing we know Will Wade does at an elite level is put together a roster yeah. and do it quickly. Yeah. And that's what he did at McNeese. So I, I think it's, uh, again, what they've done there, it's remarkable. Like I, If they would have won 20 games, it would have been remarkable. But the fact that they won 30, 30 makes it even better, and they have a chance to advance in the NCAA tournament. 
But when you look at the turnaround that just happened at LSU, from two and sixteen to nine and nine in conference play, I don't think you have to compare the two because I think both are doing big things. Well, Wade did the same thing whenever he came to LSU. He turned our program around really quick. Um, The 2018-19 season won their first five SEC games in a row, and they hadn't did that since the 2005-06 team. So I just think he's consistently a really good recruiter and a really good coach. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the point, right? Yeah. He, and he was your guy. And now he's not, and he's not because he wanted to pay players. And that is something that seems laughable. It was laughable uh, just, just two then. years later. Just, it was laughable then, and now two it years. seems... Yeah, just, just two yeah. years delayed, and it would have been perfect. Um, and, and what really sucks is he ain't going to stay in Big Nice long, you know? What are you talking about, T. Bobby? You just signed an extension. And then, because um, you you got to think, I mean, that's going to be one of the most attractive candidates in the country, not just because of the, the 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 resume, but again, what he got in trouble for now is legal. Like nobody cares, and so you already know he was good at fundraising and paying in the past. Well, of course, he's going to be even better with it now. And it's it's I just hope that he doesn't end up in the SEC. Right. Well, let's see what Vandy does with Stackhouse. I hope you don't have to watch your ex. Ooh, yeah, it's true. What are Wade's connections to Vandy as well as dad? He used to live. Well, coach he's from there, Nashville. Or did he coach there? He coached there back then. Coach I remember Clemson. his resume. He, yeah, he was. So he's from Clemson. He's, That's where he went to school. He went to school in Clemson. Okay. What am I, I thought there was a Vanderbilt connection. Either way, I hope you don't have to watch another SEC team parade around with your ex because that might be a step. Too far. Uh, Dane Berger on the $5 Super Chat. T-Bob is Coach Wade every week at Lake Charles at Spice, uh, Southern Spice Restaurant. Um, he's always nice and very approachable. Yeah, again. Oh, always. Wade has always been um, yeah. very gracious with his time and his takes uh, to this program, whether it was uh, me and Jordy, me and Jake. Like, yeah, Wade never – again – don't I'm not saying I dislike Will Wade or anything like that. Like, no, I think what I'm saying is you're kind of yearning for your bad boy X a little bit, even though your new guy is doing good and he's nice and he is good. It's just I think it's kind of a fascinating dynamic that you have at play now. Now, Matt McMahon can control this. You know, year three, you go ball out, you make the tournament, then it doesn't matter. We were, but we you got to make it. the tournament next year, right? We, we were talking yeah. about it a second ago. His third year, if, yeah. if you look at it, his third year at Murray State. 26 and 6, he makes the NCAA tournament. He's 31 and 35 right now, which isn't great. But his first two years at Murray State, he was 33 and 31. And then year three, 26 and 6, you make the NCAA tournament. The next yeah. year, 28 and 5, you also make the NCAA tournament. And then 23 and 9. So, I mean, three straight 20 plus win seasons after struggling out of the gate the first two years. Okay. So, I mean, he, he he has a little bit of a pattern as well. Next year for, for Wade and McMahon, that's going to be the telltale. Can Wade repeat what he did at McNeese? Will he still be there? And then can Matt McMahon make that third-year jump like he did at Murray State? I think Wade's probably there one more year, right? I think so. You would know better than I would, Jake. Uh, he, like I said, I mean, we were kind of joking. He did sign an extension a couple of months ago. And so he can reward them because they, they ponied up for as much as they McNeese possibly yes. could. They ponied up. And so he might reward them because they gave him an opportunity when I don't know what else was out there. Right. Yeah. And so they gave him the opportunity. He's thriving in that opportunity. Now you got to look at the jobs like Ohio State just hired from within. DePaul actually hires Chris Holtman from Ohio State when he got let go there. So some of these jobs are already filling up. And if Will thinks that he has a team coming back that can do exactly what they're doing this year, he can be like, look, I'm going to come win 30 more games. I'm going to make my name even hotter out there, and then I'm going to be able to maybe handpick the job that I want. So if he keeps winning at this clip, trust me when I say there's going to be 90% of these schools that don't care about what happened at LSU. Now, you might still have 10%, T-Bob, like, oh, well, we're not doing that, whatever, even though you know technically yeah. you can, you can yeah. go out there and you can do it. And I am going to trust Will Wade in building a roster with, with the rules that are set into place right now yeah. as much as anybody. Yeah, I agree. And so he might come back for another year, T, just because you look at some of the open jobs. And there might be more that come open. Like NC State actually looked like it was going to be open, and then the coach wins the ACC tournament, hits his incentives, and he is uh, he's staying put. So yeah, the automatic you never extension, know. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, then I kick in. Hell of a contract. Um, yeah, and to be clear, man, look, this is good for Louisiana. You know, I, I, I hate to paint it as adversarially. I, I just can't help but kind of see some of those emotional ties. But, like, shout out to all the McNeese fans out there. Shout out to the homies in, in, in Lake Charles, man. It's, you know, 
It's been a rough few years, and the distraction of having a great sports team is so welcome and and wonderful. And there's a juice there yeah. that hasn't been there uh, in well over a decade. Like I said, 11 losing seasons in a row. Last tournament was 2002, guys. That's now not to make anybody freaked out, but that's 22 years ago now. So shout out to Wade and the Pokes getting it done, making the tournament. I mean, I know who I'll be rooting for in that 12-5. It'll definitely be uh, McNeese. So anyway. Was that a shot at me? No, no, no. If you're interpreting it, because I maybe said I, I said I was rooting for McNeese as well. Okay, yeah, no, I was just wondering. I was just wondering. No, um, no I'm I'm more saying that I'm not like I, I I feel like because of the LSU stuff, I don't want to be misconstrued as saying I am ever cheering against Wade in any of this. The only way that I would cheer against Wade was be if you like went to like another SEC school and you were like directly competing against them. Not when he's doing it for Louisiana. He's still doing it for the boot, you know, Boot right. up still to this day. Yeah, I, I mean, it's okay for us to say we are going to continue to support him in the boot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's our guy. Exactly. For a I long agree. time. I agree. Um, all right, when we get back, uh, let's get into a little midweek baseball action. We got the Pelicans as well dominating last night. Keep it locked right here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Centralplumbing.org, centralplumbing.org, plumb it. Well, have them plumb Yeah, it. You, don't, you don't plumb it. 50 years, Central Plumbing's been fixing all your plumbing issues, guys. So, um, you got anything, you know, toilet won't flush, pipes leaking, water pressure's not right, shower, water heater, whatever, you call 925-8552, you take advantage of flat rate pricing, licensed, bonded, and insured employees, 50 years of experience, and, well, you get your problem solved immediately. It's centralplumbing.org, 925-8552, centralplumbing.org. When you go to that website, you will see what they can do for you in the remodel game as well. So it's not only in emergencies, right? Now, they can help you there, like T-Bob just mentioned, but that is only one part of the service they can give you. If you're looking to remodel your home or business, they can come in, they can do that. If it's one room, if it's 10, does not matter. They've got you covered. We always talk about going tankless as well with the tankless water heater. Never run out of hot water again. You can find that at centralplumbing.org. Call them today at 225-925-8552. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team 
and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart... Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Wednesday's Hump Day AFR, presented by Pluckers. Kim Mulkey joins us to preview the big dance, and we'll talk to Bill Conley from ESPN.com. It's Wednesday's AFR, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, it's happening, y'all. Welcome back. OTB. I got too much hair going on right now, dude. I didn't like a month. Um, what's up, though, y'all? Uh, look, so we talked about a basketball there in segment number one. We talked about college basketball. How about what's going down just an hour east? In New Orleans right now with your New Orleans Pelicans uh, winning their third game in a row last night, dominating the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, now 8-2 and two in the last 10, Jake. 5-1 and one in the last six. How about this from Will Guillory? Zion Williamson's last six games, he's averaging 28.5 points, 8.5 boards, 4 assists, He's got eight steals, seven blocks. He's shooting 64% from the field, 80% from the line, and the Pels went 5-1. and one. And I mean, uh, Taylor, go ahead and if you look up the highlight video, just, just find me the Zion dunk from last <laughs> night, the Najee Marshall steal and the Zion dunk where he flies through the air as if gravity shouldn't apply to this 280-pound human being. Um, 28 points at 11 to 16 last night. That's now six games in a row where he scored 20 more on 50% shooting more. Shout out Christian Clark from the advocates piece for that little juicy stat. Um, but yeah, I mean, th th this Pelicans team is seemingly gaining momentum by the day and it's starting to feel so the, 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 the word for this entire year has been sustainability. And we, we've talked constantly about the depth of this team and um, the defense that they play and all these different elements. But last season, Jake, when you were third in the West at that time, what was pushing you over the top? It was Zion Williamson being otherworldly good, right? Uh, the difference was you weren't as fleshed out in all the other areas. And Brandon Ingram was hurt. Yeah. And so you weren't complete, right? Now you have... The complete team with all the confidence and the bench playing better than maybe any bench in the NBA. And now you're getting the otherworldly Zion at a portion of the season he's never been able to play before. And the results speak for themselves. It is starting to look scary good. And they just smother bad teams on the road. Yeah. They leave little doubt. Yeah. Like when they're playing a bad team now, they just they go out there and you look at they dominate the first half and they just they leave any hope for the other team just in the locker room at halftime. And that's new. Like, they haven't done that. In years past, like, even if they've been a playoff caliber team, they've either lost to bad teams or they've had to fight all the way until, like, two minutes left in the fourth quarter against bad teams, and that's just not really the case anymore, right? And so they came out, and they didn't play bad in the second half, but they had already built such a lead that it's just a different conversation now. And you're right about Zion and all the things that you said about him. You're also right about the bench. Like, last night's nine guys is who is going to be there for the postseason. Yeah. And this looks like a rotation that they're going to use because Valanchunas now is no longer a 32-minute guy. He's no longer a 25-minute guy. He's a 17- or 18-minute guy, which that's okay. Like, he didn't play bad last night, but that's the formula right now that they're going with. 
And it's really been over the last 10 or so games that he's been in that 17, 18, 19 minute mark per night. And then your bench is going to be Nance, Marshall, Jose, and Trey. And Trey's going to get more minutes than anybody on the bench. But Larry Nance is now somebody yeah. that is going to get more minutes than the starter, Valanchunas. And it's a lineup that they like. Larry Nance was fantastic last night. 13 points, 10 boards, 2 assists, a steal, no turnovers. Yeah, Nance is coming on pop, uh, uh, um, wonderfully here at the end, and they are finding a lot of success with those smaller lineups. And, and you know, and I still love having the Valanciunas element for if you need to go big or need somebody to bang. But um, yeah, It's kind of weird because they, <laughs> they do go small with their lineup, but it's like sometimes when they go small, it's like Point Zion. That ain't small point guard. Uh, that, yeah, true. So it's a, it's a true. unique small lineup yes. as well. like Because, because everything about Zion, Zion is yeah. unique. Yes, it like, is. And by the way, guys, um... You know, if for for uh, let let the Zion body praise be as loud as the Zion body shaming, okay? Because my guy looks freaking jacked right now and looks like he's in incredible shape. And no, does he have a weird gait? Yes, but I have a weird gait. My whole life, people have always asked me if I'm limping. I'm like, I'm not limping. It's just how I walk. It's just how Zion walks and kind of yeah. jogs. You, you look look at the dunk. Play the play me the dunk here, Taylor. So this is right after Zion has one of those un, just unreal, consistent explosions to the rim where he has a nice little finger roll to finish. And this is the immediate possession after. Nets bringing the ball up. Najee Marshall pokes it away, just throws it backwards over his head. Zion jumps about 15 feet in the air to throw it down two-handed. And look at how good. Look, look at the muscles, bro. Look at the arms. Look at the length. It's the explosion. Um, again, let the body praise be as loud as the body disrespect was because that guy looks fantastic. The gate is weird. It, it, it is, is weird. a weird gate. But, hey, maybe he walks with a limp for the same reason Juvenile did. I don't know. Yeah, I just know he's very athletic. Well, and that is something that is, you know, what, 1% of the world can do, and he yeah. does it with ease. Um. And how much do you think Zion actually weighs? Like 270 probably? That's, that's like He's one of those guys that when he went to like the state fair growing up, I, I promise you they always got it wrong. I mean, to move like that and jump like that with how heavy he must be, is, and he's so like just dense mass-wise. Um, anyway, God. the Pels now 42 and 26, okay? So they've already matched their win total from last season still with 14 games to go. But here's the insane stat. Shout out Christian Clark, because this is what I was looking for. But here's the insane stat that really reinforces how bad it's been, guys. And why would we said at the time that last year, if you could take a step back, maybe wasn't as bad as we thought. Um, this is this, I, I think some will find this shocking, Jake. This is the second time in franchise history you've had back to back winning seasons. Second time in franchise history see, but I don't you've think, been back-to-back -back above 500 seasons. I, see, I don't know. I don't know that people will find that shocking because... Like, Still seems crazy, it, dude. It does, but like we're not that far removed from from oof, just some bad basketball. In, but it's but it's professional sports. I know. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's, it's, it's not like... It's built in a manner... Where you should almost trip and fall into back to back winning I seasons agree. at some point. I agree, but we have all been in that building and watched some bad basketball. Yeah. And watch rosters full of guys that wouldn't be on ninety five percent of other rosters in the NBA. And they've always had grit, they've always had fight, but it hasn't turned into wins. And so that is shocking, but maybe not as shocking if you've been in this deal for a long time. Bro, it was the O seven, O eight, and O eight, O nine Hornets with Chris Paul. We're the last to do it. I mean, we're talking damn near two decades. Yeah. Trying I, knew, to I knew it wasn't the 03, 04 Hornets with Dan Dick out at point guard. No. I knew it wasn't them. No. But um, I thought that really tells the whole story on where this team is. And now you look, what are we up to? 42 and 26. You now have a getting, you know, nobody wants to jinx anything. But getting increasingly comfortable between that five and six seed, two and a half games up now on the Kings and the Mavs, um, and only half a game. You have the same amount of wins, but one more loss 
than the Clippers, who are currently the four seed. So that main goal that we had of avoiding the play and making the playoffs becoming more realistic by the day. I mean, yeah, that is, uh, although Marjuani says Anthony Davis could never, I mean, it's crazy you had AD and you had Drew Holiday and you had these guys and you couldn't stack back-to-back winning seasons. And that's also a credit to Willie Green. I mean, it's a credit to um, Griffin, it's a credit to Trajan Langdon and what he's done as a GM, yeah. but it's a credit to Willie Green because it felt like coaching yeah. held you back for so long after you got rid of Monty Williams and and Dell Dimps was kind of a disaster in the front forget, office. Mickey Loomis was running things not that long ago. Yeah, true. True. Who's supposed to be running the Saints? And you, it was they they were an afterthought, and now um, they are. It's not even close as to which the more competent professional franchise is on this, like as it stands right now. Um, the Saints haven't been able to find a winning season for what three or four years now, and the Pels just posted back to back and look like one of the most well constructed rosters in the entirety. Of are they, the NBA. Are they now in the lead for road wins? Or are they still second? Um, let's see here. Uh I can tell you about the West. Uh it look they're they're in the lead in the West. Yep. Yeah, the Boston. Nuggets have twenty one wins, it looks like, on the road, and the Pels have twenty two. All right, well. So road saying. Warriors. Road Warriors, dude. Again, only, only team in the Western Conference with a better winning percentage on the road than at home. Yeah. We'll take it. And uh this is game one of a four game road trip. Next up, Orlando, I believe. Um, Orlando. Go take care of business once again. Shout out to Zion and the Pelsman. Really, and somebody asked, how, how does one hop on the bandwagon? Is it butt first? Look, hop on however you want, okay? Everybody is welcome. Um, get excited. There is very good basketball being played, very good NBA basketball, and it's it's always fun to watch a team on the rise, right, before expectations take over and create anger. Like the most fun portion of any um, of any of these runs is when a team is outdoing expectations, which is exactly what the Pelicans are doing right now. Um, great job by the entire franchise. You love to see it. All right, uh, when we get back, you got to update the Chase Young story as uh, we got some news yesterday. You also have LSU spring ball. We got a lot of college football to get to as well. I mean. More lawsuits for the ACC, 14-team playoff officially codified. There's something to get to. Keep it locked right here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to Trash Rangers, okay? If you live in a center to live as a parish, you have a choice about who gets to handle your trash. You choose Trash Rangers. And, uh, well, you're going to be supporting local business, um, but also you're mainly going to be helping out yourself. Because it's just so simple and so easy. You go to TrashSignUp.com in three minutes, y'all. You can see your pickup days, choose your amount of cans, prices, all of that. Um, and by the way, you've probably seen those red cans that your neighbors have now. That's Trash Rangers. They're going to text you the night before they show up. they got beautiful new dump trucks, the latest technology to make sure um, that they are efficiently and correctly handling your waste. And unlike the national companies... The profits stay right here in your community. Trash Rangers. Go to the website today and sign up, like T-Bob said. I mean, you also see the ratings on the website. I mean, 4.7 out of 5 with almost 3,000 ratings. They're going to do it for you. They're going to do it for everybody. TrashRangersLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. It was a human day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time 
like cyber stumps Your roots are planted deep inside of me Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us is set for the 2024 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Tune in for first round coverage Thursday night at 6 and Friday night at 6. Then catch second round coverage starting Saturday at noon and Sunday morning at 11. Right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. All right, a uh, couple of big pieces of news here as, God, it, look, it looks really lit in Seoul right now, though I'm not going to lie. I love the in-game entertainment of whatever like K-pop thing they got going on on the dugouts. With the hype guy. It's kind of like what Auburn tries to do, but it seems way more like it has way more juice than when Auburn does it. But um, Dodgers currently now leading 4-2 after trailing pretty much the entire game, uh, looking to get one over on the Padres. Anyway, a um, couple of big pieces of news here. First, during the break, uh, Jake just informed me that we now know what number Kirk Cousins is going to wear for the Atlanta Falcons. What are we looking at? Uh, none other than number 18. Wow. The 1-8. Classic. Kirk Cousins. As if uh, Jake couldn't have more of a man crush on his cousins. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirk going to be rocking Wait, number 18. It's not even a man crush. It's just there was people in this room and three at the time a we year gonna see. ago. That told me that Derek Carr was better than Kirk Cousins, and that's how this whole thing started. I we're gonna see. Let's see what he does with Justin Jefferson. It wasn't you. I wouldn't have. Yeah, it was not Let's you. See it wasn't what he Taylor does. either. Let's see what he does without Justin Jefferson. How about that? Hmm? That's what I want to see. Um, he's had good years without. I mean, he's like the only Washington quarterback that had more than one good season. Because didn't RG three have like one? He was rookie really good his, season. his rookie year. Yeah, his rookie the playoffs, year. and then yeah. beat the year Saints. two was with the, the knee injury. Yeah. Um. Speaking I of, the, yeah, the, the, the play where he's like laying on the ground celebrating. Yeah. No, he up. had he had an incredible game that game. Also, that was that Saints had that weird streak where they just couldn't beat rookie quarterbacks. Uh, don't know why. But um, speaking of the Saints, we spent all of yesterday's show. In the opening of the show, really uh, championing the Chase Young signing, and I, I, you know, I, I stand by those statements. But there was a news piece yesterday that uh, did take some of the luster off of the Young signing. As uh, here's a quote, uh, a tweet from Adam Schefter: "New Saints defensive end Chase, New Saints defensive end Chase Young, who signed his one-year, thirteen million dollar deal with New Orleans today." 
is undergoing a neck procedure that is expected to sideline him into training camp, per sources. The expectation is that he will return in time for the season. Teams were aware of his neck issue, and the Saints were comfortable moving ahead with it. Um, what's funny about this is I don't blame the Saints for doing this at all. You know, I think that, I mean, is this a red flag? Yes, it's the literal definition of a red flag, right? But um, desperate times call for desperate measures. And this is still the best option that you could get given um, kind of where you're at and where he's at. Uh, it does, though, any quotes about why the Saints, you know, winning culture, all that stuff, that kind of rings a little hollow now. Because the real answer is, why the Saints? Because they gave me $13 million guaranteed despite the fact that I'm having a neck surgery that's going to keep me out till right at the edge of camp. Like, like that's like that's the actual uh. why there. So now, unfortunately, Young going to lose um, an offseason that he kind of, you, you would have loved for him to have in order to take that game to the next level. Did you see uh, Joe Horn's cell phone? Did you see his Twitter account? Uh, is he the one that put post? the neck brace on it? Yeah, he yeah, put the... Yeah, like that, James. Which is actually well done, too. <laughs> Except the neck is I white. mean, it's not really that well done of a Photoshop, I mean, but it is funny. You can't put the it neck brace funny. inside of the shirt. Uh, so like, it's, 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 it's very funny, for sure. I don't remember where I read this, so I can't attribute credit or whatever, but... I also read that uh, this the Saints weren't Chase Young's first choice. Um, I you know I and imagine it's not, that it's I'm not shocked. funny. It's not funny that Chase Young needs to have neck surgery, but it is funny that the Saints signed somebody that needs to have neck surgery and will miss training camp. Well, he did, now now to be fair, oh well, yeah, it's like I'm into training camp. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Into yeah, so, uh, so that, that like makes how, me think he might be back for a little bit of it. And well, what we, what we talk about though, all, like we, one of the things that we loved about it was we're like, hey, when healthy, this yeah. guy's a dog. Yeah, when healthy, and he's when not healthy. Although, and, and, and they knew this, and so and, and other teams knew this, and that's probably why he was still available at the point in free agency yeah. that he was. Yeah. It's why he had Without to sign a, a one-year deal. Without a doubt. Neck injuries scare the hell out of me. Yes. Yeah, because you I mean, never know how they're going, how your body's going to react, and how long they're going to hold up. And you don't know if it's going to cause other problems. Like, is it going to turn into a back problem, a back issue? Yeah. I mean, plus your, uh, you, your, your, your neck is under major impact every single play at that position. Yeah. I mean, you're going head to head every single play well there was a report that came out that like this actually happened like earlier last season and he was able to play through right. like a lot of it so i mean hey seven and a half sacks with a bum neck like you know what look i mean i, I he still didn't do, stand he by didn't do enough manual neck with the towel yep. yeah in the weight room i still stand by everything we said um it's just that you know this this does kind of make some puzzle pieces fall into place as to like jake said why it was available why was it the saints Okay, now now it all makes a bit more sense. And him saying, "I'm not excited to prove anything." <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because he, yes, he really, I don't know if we, he can. Um, but, but him saying that also because understanding that like he's already going to be kind of starting behind the eight ball in a way, right? So he's trying to he, kind of deflect maybe some of that judgment that's going to be coming his way. Yeah, but, I mean, he's um, got to prove something. He's just not excited about. Adam it. Field yeah. <laughs> says, uh, "Well, I fully expect this sign to fail miserably." Guys, let's not go all the way there. Okay, don't be overly negative. We can still choose to be positive, but as MDK says, "Typical Saints BS." Um, all right, when we get back, we're closing hour one of OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. K T O Z Blinds dot com. That is K to Z window coverings. You're looking for window coverings that wow. You want K to Z. Now, they're going to wow aesthetically, right? They're going to look great. Pop. Make your home pop. Who's ever into interior design? If you want to get them a nice little gift, um, why don't you get Brandon Barton out to your home? But what I love is the science behind it because uh, Brandon will spend a few minutes in your home and you are going to know more about the interplay of sunlight and window coverings and the functionality and utility of what they can offer you. It's, it's, you don't even recognize how deep this hole goes. But Brandon does, and he's going to take care of you. So go to K to Z blinds, K to Z window coverings. And just trust us, like when Brandon comes into your home within five minutes, like you could have lived there for five years. He's going to know the space better than you. That's just what he does. That is his specialty. He's going to help you out. Interior, exterior, does not matter. K2Z blinds.com.
Our listeners fire up their opinions on the JimsFirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the JimsFirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB, T-Bob, Jake, Alondra, and Taylor hanging out with you. A lot of chatter in the chat by for YouTube chat about uh, this Chase Young deal. You can, keep play, you can keep music playing or anything. I like that song. Yeah, it sounds nice. Um... Anyone want to bet Davenport has a better season than Young? Okay, let's relax. Let's relax. There's potential that that happens, but let's also not forget that, well, maybe it's actually a bad sign. Davenport did sign a one-year $13 million deal with the Vikings last year only to play in two games. I think it was, correct? Um, now, he had a sack in both games, for whatever that's worth. Um, Yodek Barabucci, 13 million for Young with a neck injury. In that case, the Saints overpaid. I would say yes. Again, that's why I'm saying the puzzle pieces are falling into place, right? Um, how did the 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 Chase Young really want to come here because of the winning culture? Now, to be fair, compared to Washington, the Saints do objectively have a winning culture, well, even if it struggled here as of late. Yeah, compared to anybody. Um, yeah, Washington's you're saying in Washington's case, be worse. yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe not the Raiders. But then at least they have that stadium. True. Verse. Washington has sewage pipes that leak onto yeah. their fans in their stadium. So, um, Adam Fields, I don't care if the Saints overpay for a single year. That's what it takes to field teams sometimes. 
I think that's a pretty level-headed take by Adam as well, right? Like, okay, let's say you overpaid in relation to the next surgery. Fine. It's one year. You're not committed on the books multiple years. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You need it to take a shot. It's at a position of importance. Like, you can say, yes, they did overpay. But again, it's because they had to, right? So I still like the signing overall. I, I just think that it's 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 funny given the context of where fans' heads are at with the franchise lately, where it's almost like it's one of those things where um, when you start to dislike someone, you know, um, and and to be fair, you know, I, I've had one real relationship in my life, but I've seen it in others' relationships where it starts to go a bit sour. And suddenly everything that person does, even if it's actually like not that big of a deal and relatively inoffensive or is nothing at all, everything starts to annoy that, like annoy you or, or loom larger, right? And so because people are unhappy with the Saints, instead of focusing on signing Chase Young, the focus is going to be on, well, you signed this hurt guy for $13 million, And of course you did because you suck. <laughs> um, I still think it's a good move for me personally, but uh, we'll see. It's a flyer on a player that last year had a good season. It's not like his best season was two years ago. You know, just last year, he had a really good season. He played for multiple teams. And you had a position of need where you were probably going to be real interested in moving up in the NFL draft if you didn't sign a player of this caliber. And so if they believe that the medical is going to be just fine, I'm, I'm okay with it because it is just one year. Yeah. So... It changes your draft strategy, I think. And if you didn't get a player like this, I think that they would be very aggressive in moving up. So now you get to sit at 14 and take what I think is a bigger position of need, someone on the offensive line. Because do you, So you think they should draft for need instead of you know the whole best player thing? Yeah, because their quarterback is not going to play well if he's not protected. He's shown yep. that in his career. He has got to be clean in the pocket for him to play at his best. And last year... You did not play well in front of him, and it's not going to set him up for success, and you are committed. Like, you are so committed to Derek Carr, it feels like you're committed to him more than, like, the Bengals are committed to Joe Burrow. I mean, yeah. they just – they want Derek Carr to work out in New Orleans. Yeah, two years. I mean, at least. At least two years of Derek Carr. Not so, yeah. I wasn't being serious. Don't – Um, <laughs> Wait, what? I wasn't being, like, serious with the Oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're No, no, I'm saying – but, no, you are, like – no, the Saints – like as the contract was originally written, it really wasn't that much of commitment. And this offseason, when yeah. you reworked it, you guarantee and he's you keep be bringing your guy in people that were around him in Oakland or Vegas. Peterman, that's the signing we should be talking about. No injuries there. How about that, Nathan? Hour two coming up next. Had a ton of college football to get to and baseball. Off the bench with Hester and T. Bob. Who would steal thirty bagged lunches? I got a story on that as well. G E A U X Tommies.com. Go Tommies.com. Um, you need Tommy's windows, doors, and siding. I was going to say you need windows, doors, and siding. You need Tommy's windows, doors, and siding. And look, whether it's uh, vinyl or wood windows, vinyl, hardy plague signing, or any type of door, Tommy's has your back. Um, Jake, talk about Tommy's while I pull up some of these testimonials. Go to GoTommy's.com, and you're going to see a list of what they've done, right? Then testimonials t is going to give you, but also you can check out the galleries. You can check out pictures of what they've done and, yeah, windows, doors, and siding, T-Bob. Fantastic, fast, efficient, and great cleanup. Tommy is an honest man and will give you a great price. The installers are a pleasure to work with. In my opinion, the best company in town for window replacement. Go Tommy's.com, Tommy's Windows Door Society. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. 
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on Wednesday, March 20th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 64. In hour two of today's show, we'll recap some LSU baseball and a lot more topics on the docket as well. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB hour number two rolling right along. I uh, got a lot of college football to get to this hour. Uh, no flustering today. Uh, I do want to get into Clemson between the ACC. I want to get into LSU spring ball. I want to get the LSU midweek for baseball. Uh, we talked a lot of basketball hour number one as LSU wraps up their season, a solid season. And uh, we, he, so I, I guess another reason why I went so hard on the, on, on the Wade bit in hour one, Jake, is I didn't know about that audio from the McNeese press conference, which get that ready to go so we can play it again here in a second. Um, I think Leonardo da Vinci in the Bayou Ford YouTube chat said it best when he said, Ducose Serrano Vernea per Cosimo, Ruera Leno, or Programma, and Porte e Dick Vertel Sara Morto della Vicia. I could not agree more, da Vinci. Um, that's kind of basically what we broke down in hour number one. And um, yeah, I, I, I just think that 30 and three record, that turnaround, the, literally the largest turnaround in NCAA history over there, in McNeese. Let's go, Pokes. Uh, let's. I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching them in the uh, in the tournament. And 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 again, like like Jake said, like an actual legit chance to be that 12-5 upset, even going against a traditional power like Gonzaga. Which isn't that kind of crazy? What a uh, what an opportunity that is. You know, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like, I mean, shoot, we just made our first tournament since 0-2, and now we got to play Gonzaga, but. 
You could also look at it like, ooh, we get a chance to make a statement like going out there and beating Gonzaga in, in, in March Madness. Yeah, and Gonzaga got overseeded. They probably are more of a seven seed than they are a five seed. And they end up getting on the five line there, even though just like three weeks ago, people were saying they had to win games A, B, and C to get into the tournament. And they won all but one of those games and they get in. So if you're McNeese, you're like, yeah, there are five, but they're more like a seven. Yeah. And also, like, if we want to, you know, kind of set a new standard, we get to play the team that is the biggest Cinderella of all time. It is the best mid major basketball program. I think in the history of basketball, mm-hmm. and that's not you know being a prisoner of the moment. They've made the tournament twenty five straight years. Yeah, they've made the Sweet Sixteen ten straight years. Oh wow, ten straight years Gonzaga basketball has made the Sweet Sixteen. So <sighs> if you go out there and beat them, that's crazy, right? I mean, that is you have so much to gain. And then if you lose, honestly, even though I, I think that they're overseeded, you lost to the team that always makes tournament runs. So it's like, ah, oh, we just ran into Gonzaga. That's like, what I'm you saying. Have nothing to lose. I think, yeah, I think it's a pretty it's 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 not a bad spot. It's it's a great it's, spot, it's, 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 it's it's a real uh, opportunistic spot. That would be so crazy if Wade and the Pokes were to stop them. For some reason I thought last year that sweet sixteen streak had stopped. That would be insane. If it was McNeese coming off of 11 losing seasons in a row, that would stop Gonzaga coming off of 10 sweet 16s in a row. So uh, a lot on the line there, and and we'll move on after this. But here is Will Wade at the opening press conference for uh, McNeese uh, last year when he took the job. Wait to start the largest turnaround in college basketball this next season. We're going to go from 23 losses to 23-plus wins next year. Remember I said that. We're going to start that today. We're going to start that today. And we're going to, we're going to all do it together. And I can't remember I said that and then tied the largest basketball turnaround in NCAA history uh, and, and went to 30 wins, not even 23-plus. So uh, really... Really fantastic stuff. Um, right. There's not many things like that Coach Wade is going to be like tiptoeing into. You know no. what I'm saying? Like yeah. that. That's just his personality, and that's how he attacked that job. Don't go. He does not go half stepping. No. Nope. Uh, that is objectively true. So and that's I'm what I love so much about him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, and and, and that's kind of where we're getting at too. Uh, he knows it, right? Yeah. He 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 knows it. And he's not, uh, he, ain't, he ain't shy about it. And it is that confidence that you feel. Um, uh, da Vinci, if Wade wins one or two, does Louisville say damn the NCAA and bring him in? They keep losing other candidates to extensions. I think, you know, anybody, again, I, I think we kind of broke it down hour one where he'll, he'll likely have some offers that he could act on now. He could wait a year if he kind of likes the momentum he got in McNeese. And if they have another good year and we're talking about like make the tournament again, then he probably has his like pick of the litter, right? Um, because again, I, I think, I, I don't even think it's a damn the NCAA thing. I think the NCAA is so feckless. Like nobody cares about them at all anymore. And when, again, what Wade got in trouble for does not make him unattractive. Um, does not. I've been trying to translate Da Vinci's. I think it's Italian, right? That's yeah. something that's not so, Spanish, yeah, right? No, but, but I mean, Italian. obviously as a romance language, you, you have a better base yeah. upon which to build. Yeah. I think I have some of it deciphered. Yeah. And I was just trying to just roll through it. I mean, yeah. I, I missed multiple words, awful pronunciation. I was just trying to make it sound that legitimate. That was great. Um, LSU in the midweek last night. Baseball back on the diamond after this point in weekend in the dude. The duty and the duty, if you will. Uh, last night, much less smelly. As a team takes care of business. Hops on uh, Louisiana Tech early. Never lets up. 11-1 over the Diamond Dogs in the box. Um, LSU remains Fine at the plate. You know, Jay Johnson coming out of this weekend series said, look, 18 runs, not enough to sweep, but that's enough to win the series. Yeah, Don't hate where we're at offensively. Obviously, all those losses start on the mound. So uh, great to see the offensive success continue into the midweek. Um, White, Travinsky, Pearson all had a multi-hit game. You get 10 hits for the eight time this season. Shout out. I think Koki Riley had that in the advocate. Um, Javen Coleman struggled, but apparently Javen Coleman got sick like right before the game started. Uh, and so not 100% went out there, tried to gut it out. Uh, but then Griffin Heron, Aiden Moffitt, Lower Loa, Johnson, Bucknam, they did a fine job of closing out that game against, I can remember, this is a good Louisiana Tech team, 16-5, uh, number one in the CUSA record-wise. They hadn't played a conference game yet. 
but um, a, a good hitting team, and you took care of business. I guess the problem is, Jake, you're at the portion of the season where midweek games kind of only carry risk, not as much reward, in that a fan ba- if you lose a series to Mississippi State, fans are not going to care that you beat La Tech. They just, they're only going to care if you lose that game. Like, the only way to yeah. wash the bad taste out for the fans, it's definitely good for the players. Don't get me wrong. But the only bad way to wash the taste out for the fans is to go take care of business against Florida this Friday, 7 p.m. in the box. Without question. And certainly when you're playing in in-state school, like, we've talked about that for years and years and years. Like, yeah. you know that they want to come into your stadium and they want to beat you. Like, some of those players, they had dreams of playing for LSU. And Louisiana Tech's a good baseball program. So, like, for players, like, going out there and winning 11-1 to like they did and Tommy White getting multiple hits, Stravinsky, like you said, like, that's for them. That is going to be I think a big great. deal and yeah. moving forward and getting their momentum back. And also, you know, everybody after Coleman pitching really well yesterday. Those are all good things for the players, but, like, in the fans' eyes, it doesn't matter if you don't take at least two of three from Florida. Again, it's good to see, but it's not like, yeah, it's good to see. And, and the opposite would be awful. Like, if you lose to Mississippi State and then you go out and you lose to La Tech, yeah. that's when you get the irrational panic and, and anger starting to set in. But, so but this was just a nice... So handle that situation. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. This is a um, this is like brushing your teeth. You well, know? The, this, was, this was solid to kind of get feeling good for the party that you're about to go to. You brush your teeth, you got dressed up, you shaved whatever you needed to shave. Like, okay, let's go. It's almost party time. The in-state school coming into your stadium and beating you happened to Florida last night. Jacksonville beat them at oh, wow. home. So, I mean, we're, we're coming weird. in with good momentum, and they're coming in off a loss. But at the same time, our, their fans yeah. probably don't care that much because right, they just because took they just two or three Texas from A&M. Right. Yeah. But um, what I'm getting at is that they're coming to Alec Box, and they are coming off a loss to Jacksonville yeah. at their – Fields. That's yeah, what's their new man. what's their new field uh called? Uh Chris Doring Mortgage Company field. Yep, that's right. That's I was so crazy they named it that. Mm-hmm. Um shout out C D. Can't believe you got the baseball stadium named after him. That's yeah. very random. Slinging mortgages. Um Conjuring Family Ballpark. So look, I'm I mean, to, and 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 to me it's like the starters were so good in the preseason portion here. I have to imagine that what you saw against Mississippi State, and again, where it becomes concerning, this was not the best hitting Mississippi State team coming into that series. Dakota Jordan was awesome, but outside of that, there wasn't a lot to write home about. They scored 17 last night. Um, well, maybe they found something, right? Like yeah. maybe something clicked because, like, Memphis. Hines definitely looked like someone who could keep it going. Marshawn was the other one that was already batting well. Downs had that massive Sunday. Like, so, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe State ends up being a very good hitting team. They traditionally are. But, um, but but I got to imagine that that the starters, the pin, because of what they did in the preseason, is better than what they put on display uh, last week. Um, so Friday, right? Aren't, aren't we going to get? We'll get Caglione versus Holman. Oh, God, that's always fun. Caglione last Friday, I think, hit two home runs and got the win on the mound over A and M. So one of the most exciting players in all of college baseball going to be coming to the box this weekend. Look, momentum is a hell of a thing in baseball. We saw Auburn, they you know, they had a tough weekend last weekend, and then they come out, they lose to South Alabama in the midweek. We saw Mississippi State take two or three from LSU. They score seventeen runs, win seventeen to nine. And like so you getting a win against Louisiana Tech T Bob, I mean fans might hand wave that, but like momentum in this thing is a real thing. And like, are you going to be Auburn that just continues to slide? You lose three games on the weekend, then you lose a midweek game to South Alabama. Or are you going to be a team that comes out, plays a good Louisiana Tech baseball team, and run rules them, right? So, yeah. like, getting that win heading into this Florida series, and Florida drops a game against Jacksonville, who's 8-12 and 12 on the year. Oh, wow. Jacksonville's Baseball's 12, funny, dude. Right? There you go. So, you feel good about LSU going into the weekend. You take two or three of from Florida, which is going to be difficult. You're right back to yeah. maybe not the place that we thought you were as the number two team in the country, but you're right back in the conversation. Yeah, I mean, and again, I don't care about – rankings or anything at this point all I care about is taking two or three every weekend taking two or three every weekend and you know maybe falling into a sweep one or two times and avoiding a sweep at all costs which is one of the silver linings of last week is you flirted with absolute disaster 
I mean, again, we, we always talk about what are the single game differences that feel so much larger than a single game? The 3 0 2 1 or 1 2 0 3, maybe even more so, split feels just massive. Yeah. Massive. I mean, I guess in ways it's a 33 or 66% difference. Stats are weird. I don't know. Uh, Southern Miss beat Ole Miss 8 to 3, by the way. Uh, Belmont beat Vanderbilt 3 to 1. So, And this is after Vandy uh, just swept who last weekend? Auburn, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah a good ranked Auburn team. Uh, midweek games. And again, Very Auburn lost in the midweek as well. Uh, didn't Ole Miss sweep over the weekend, and they lost to Southern Miss. Yeah. So. So, um, so we'll see what happens Friday, man. Again, shaved up, feeling fresh, Abercrombie fierce on, ready for the party going down in the box this weekend. Got to hold serve at home. That's the other thing we talked about yesterday. Every SEC road team uh, losing their series in the opening week, just showing the power of home field advantage. So it also, look, if you are going to the box this weekend, bring the same energy that you brought to those banana games, okay? I heard that, what, all the tickets are general admission? I heard people were out there like three or four hours beforehand to make sure they got good seats. Yeah, because you because it was it was you weren't assigned seat. It was all general admission. Yeah, so it was like kind of first come first serve. My uh, my sister and brother in law went. They got there like forty five minutes early, and they still had trouble finding a spot. I mean, there were people showing up at no. That's what I'm saying. I heard like people that got game, there yeah. like an hour and a half, two hours early, and got like mm-hmm. pretty bad seats. So uh, again, I'm not saying you got to be there early, but yeah, bring the energy this weekend. Make it hard on the Gators to go away from home. And I got to imagine Holman's going to be better. Um, jump already wasn't that bad. Like jump, jumps fine. And then uh, I'm I'm less sure about Thatcher on Sunday. This is a big moment for him. Yeah. So Holman's stat line against State, as we talked about, like it was weird because you gave up a ton of hits, but all but one were singles. Yeah. You know. That's true. So like, yeah, they're they're making contact, and you got to give Mississippi State credit for adjusting their approach. But like, you feel like okay, he can get back on track. Mm-hmm. Gauge jump right. A couple of real close misses, he can get back. Thatcher Hurd's the one you're like, okay, yeah. we know you have it in you. We saw you on a title team last year, you know, really become a crucial piece of what won that national championship. And, you know, credit again, credit to Mississippi State because, like, one of those home runs was a really good breaking ball Oof. that just got muscled out to dead center field, right? Mm. So and he pimped those it are things, and he should have. But those are things that you can work on. The stuff looks like it is there, but it's about the small little details and finding your spots, finding your location, not allowing one home run to become two. And so, like, we've seen it from him. But the Friday and Saturday spot, I still feel good about. Sunday is a, still a question mark. All right, when we get back here on OTB, uh, let's get into some college football talk as there's a lot of stories to get to. Caden Proctor back in the news once again. Uh, He got more lawsuits against the ACC. 14-team playoff officially codified. Um, get Get all, and LSU Spring Ball coming up next here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Speaking of winning the Natty last year, remember our guy Gordon McKernan, 8,888 reasons to rally? What did the boys do? Rally. Won the World Series. Now many of them on the G-Team. Hayden Travinsky most recently added to the G-Team along with Alex Malazzo. Just a couple of catchers. Cutting it up. Uh, but look, if you need somebody who's going to fight for you against the big insurance companies, get you what you deserve when you get into an accident, you want Gordon McKernan. 225-888-8888, any area code. Then all the eights. Uh, go to getgordon.com today. Follow him on social media at getgordon. That is right. It is any area code in Louisiana. So if you're listening to us here in Baton Rouge, down in New Orleans, up in Alexandria, up in Shreveport, like we are talking to you. They can help you throughout the state of Louisiana. It is that area code followed by 888-8888, but it's always also online, getgordon.com, and always on social media at getgordon. Get Gordon and get it done. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com.
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal building. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Oh, welcome back, OTB. Hour two. Roll right along. Um, One thing we should have mentioned, we had the conversation during the break, but uh, help me, Obi Wan Tom Nobi. You're my only hope. Tommy White locked in right now. Uh, Tanks, what now is homered in four games in a row? Another four hits last night. Again, offensively, LSU is like pre- pretty much fine, right? There's um, there there. I'm not saying it was perfect last weekend, uh, as we've discussed, but. It, it it wasn't the it wasn't the reason why you lost. I guess is what I'm getting at. Uh, still though, if you, you you just need okay when, when Tommy's this hot, we we gotta get guys on base. You know, you just gotta le- set the table for him. I mean, last year what he he led the NCAA in ribbies overall, yep. right? Um, we had over a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which in and, the college game is ludicrous. You know, and so ideally. You can craft this lineup in a way where he's not batting second. Where did he bat last night, actually? He bat second. second. It was yeah. Bingham, White. Jones, Stravinsky. Yeah, Jones, Stravinsky. They did move Braswell up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he batted six last night. One yeah. of the other silver linings from last weekend. Yeah. Braswell's offense. Last night, two RBIs last night. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, moving the right way in that regard. All right, let's get into some college football. <laughs> Many are saying that uh, Caden Proctor is a sign of the times and how broken college football is. Um, I, I, my opinion on the broken front, we can explore, but 
if you missed it, or maybe you're like, who's Caden Proctor? Um, the, Caden Proctor was a the freshman left tackle for Alabama. Uh, he struggled early on. He's a ma- oh, sorry. He's so let's go all the way back. Massive recruit out of high school, five star, O lineman from Iowa, committed to Iowa throughout his entirety of his recruiting process. At the very last minute, flips to Alabama. Ends up being their starting left tackle as a true freshman. Struggles early on, but um, but ends up really finding himself and getting pretty damn good. And, and I want to say, did he end as a freshman All-American? Yeah. yeah he so, started every game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, again, if you start at Alabama every game as a freshman, there's a good chance you're, you're going to be up. freshman All-American. Yeah, there's a good chance you're going to end up as a freshman All-American. But he did get better. Like, he struggled, and he got better and better as the year went on. Well, Nick Saban leaves, and Caden Proctor leaves and he decides he's going to go back to Iowa. It was one of the big stories in the wake of the Saban departure and and it had a lot of funny elements to it such as like Proctor talking about how Iowa was texting him when he was struggling being like we're there for you bro. And I, Iowa had to self report that. Yes. Remember. Yes, that's what I was going to so so yeah because that's an NCAA uh tampering <laughs> violation technically for what it's worth. Uh but now and another hilarious twist after, I mean, he's been up there, right? It's not like he never went to Iowa. He's yeah, been up there a couple months, there. been working out. Um, I don't know if they started spring ball yet, but in, a, in, in just a hilarious twist, Caden Proctor has announced he is going back to Alabama. So in a matter of three months, he left the Tide, had this whole I'm coming home campaign, right? Like, like, I, I, I grew up in Iowa. I was a Hawkeye fan. I was always committed to Iowa. Yeah, from and Des Moines. Now, and now that Saban is gone, I'm going to make all the your dreams, my dreams come true. And I don't know if it was after seeing those facilities, after dealing with Kirk Ferentz, or, or, or what, but... We're running inside zone again. My guy said, you know what, fam? Nah, this ain't, this ain't for me, actually. I'm going back to T-Town. I'm going back to, to those facilities, that environment, and I'm going back yeah. to the Tide. Poor like Elijah Pritchett, who um, he's been the starting left tackle in spring for Alabama. Mm. Uh, somebody who's a redshirt sophomore, so he's been there multiple years, waits his turn, Sorry, gets, a, gets a chance to go out there and play left tackle for Alabama. And it's like, oh, hey, um, yeah, he's coming back. Uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be a depth piece now. Um, yeah, I it's wait, what did you say, Taylor? I said I would needs a left tackle now. Uh, yeah, get old, get old Elijah Pritchett. Let's just do a little bring it back do to yesterday. Let's trade. do a little partner swap with Alabama and Iowa. Now he can't, How, wait, so, like he can't just go down to Tuscaloosa. Like you've got to finish school at Iowa, that, bro. So that's what I was actually about to get at. I have no idea. I have no idea. Could he transfer back if he wanted to? Like in tech, like in this new age with unlimited transfers, can can he can do this right? Okay, he can so, just bounce yeah, around. He can do that, but like want. eligibility, like you've got to. He, he had to be definitely had to be enrolled thinking. because you have to have a certain amount of hours. That yeah, you I would imagine that he has to finish his uh, his spring he's got, semester. He's got to finish at yeah, Iowa. That's kind of awkward. Yeah, he's going to finish there, and then he'll go down to Tuscaloosa for summer workouts. Um, I just, lo- I mean, do you know the? That's why we don't even talk about the school portion of, yeah, of, of school. the transfer no, portal. Because it, because it doesn't matter. We're, the, the facade is finally gone. Look, there's the rare college football player who treats academics correctly as the opportunity is or has the mental bandwidth and discipline at that age to do the academic and athletic thing correctly. But, I mean, I don't know, Jake. When I was playing, I – very much felt football first, school second. And I don't know of anybody that really felt different. Like, I don't care what kind of fantasies you're trying to tell everybody, but, like, football was your job. Yeah. And even, it was 24-7. Even if you wanted to do something more than you and I did in school, like Sean Jordan, who was a biology major. See, you know, like, I would say he was one of the rare ones. Like, there are the rare ones that, right. that can so he do took, that. He took school incredibly serious, yes. but also it was still football 1A, schools 1B. Yeah. Because you have to, like... You have to put the time and the effort that the same effort that I did in the NFL in college, right? I mean, it's the same effort. It's the same getting prepared. It's the same work ethic yeah. towards your goal of going 100%. out there on Saturdays and performing your best. The difference is in the NFL, you don't have to worry about school. You don't have to worry about going to class. 
football is your class, but that doesn't mean that you don't do the same prep work. Like you're still going over the blitzes and the coverages and the fronts and all these different things. Yeah. It, it said, you know, in the NFL, instead of having to study uh, econ 101, um, you're, you're studying third down pickups. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pegasus J says he has to finish the semester, then head back. Uh, saying yeah. he basically spent a semester abroad in Iowa. Um, yeah. Now, what do y'all feel? Does this mean the sport is broken? Again, I, 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 I'm, I'm reaching the point now where I'm like, I don't know. I can't bring myself to get upset about any of this. I just feel like this is all the reactions of, uh, this is kind of the natural uh, ripple effects of having such an illegal system as the NCAA had for 100 years. Yeah. And at a time when it became obvious that it was illegal, Instead of trying to get ahead of it and be transformative and take control, you just tried to desperately cling on to it, like Jack holding on to that floating piece of wood before Rose lets him go underneath. Like I just, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't even view it as a commentary. It's where I'm like, this is just funny. Like whatever. I don't know. Like I, I don't know that I'd say broken, and this was going to be the thing that just was the final straw. Maybe transferring twice in in uh, you know a three month period, <laughs> like th that's something. May, so may, may, maybe you can just have like one transfer a year because I that's going to be tough for Proctor himself as well. Like it's not you're not going to just walk back in that locker room with open arms, bro. That's like, what's in the balls to make this move. And then he went on Instagram and in his story did the Michael Jordan picture with the "I'm back" quote. I mean, the balls on this cat, Proctor. Again, like if, if I'm part of that team, like eventually maybe it gets to a good point. I'm like, man, you just straight up like Christian bailed on us. Like you were out. You went back home. And then we got Elijah over here that's been playing left tackle <laughs> during spring practice during fourth quarter program. He was here and you weren't. Like well, that's, that's the part the thing, that I right? would like, I would kind of worry about. How's I know Pritchett, I agree. <laughs> how's Pritchett performing in spring? Like if he's nah, doing well, that don't matter, bro. That don't yeah, matter. Yeah, I mean, Kate Pro but Kate Proctor ain't getting beat out by Elijah Pritchett and Pritchett didn't get him his freshman year. This actually now Jake's right. In like the, now I'd be worried about the salty feelings and maybe how like. But then again, these players kind of they're bro. It's it's you know, it's kind of an honor amongst thieves situation. They all know the score, right? It's like when you're in the NFL, like. You know how in college, I don't know, Jake, in college you, like, hated enemy players? I feel like in the yeah. NFL you may hate teams, but, like, player to player for the most part, unless you got some sort of personal beef. Right. I feel like it's more like we're all pros. Yeah. Like, like yeah, we're all pros here. Oh, so we would MF each other all game long, and then after the game, like, like good, we're good. Good game, bro. Good game. No, no, we're like, we're good. We're going to have a conversation about some of the plays that, yeah. you know, we had during the game. Like, college, there was people that still to this day, I don't like you. Yeah, it was like on site. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I think that is changing, and so it I is. wonder. I wonder it, if even Proctor will like get like how much crap will he actually get from the Alabama players, especially because DeBoer is probably selling him to a message of like, I get it, bro. It's all good. Yeah. I know why you did what you had to do, but you're welcome back. This happened on their coaching staff. Remember, Kalen DeBoer brings his OC from Washington. <laughs> he's at Alabama for like a month. Yeah. And he's like, nah, I'm going back to Washington. Yeah, Ryan Grubb. I mean, he got a chance to go back to the NFL. But, and, yeah, I agree with you, T. But I, I'm, I guess I'm just saying, like, for the players that had to step up when he left. I'll be so pissed. Right? You would be mad. And also, like, oh, yeah. your boys would be mad. But this is like um, the old Seattle Hall of Fame offensive tackle, Walter Jones. Oh boy would never do training camp. Yeah. Just because he was like, he's not good for my body. I don't need to. And then, so you'd have some poor sap. You'd be taking all the one reps, oh. uh, all the preseason games. And then Walter Jones shows up after camp. He's like, all right, ugh, cracks the neck a couple times. All right, season time, baby. Let's yeah. do this. And that guy's either cut or he's just back on the bench. <laughs> that happens actually more <laughs> than, than than you would think with some of the uh, the old like ten year NFL vets that know they're headed for a gold jacket one day, and it's tough, and and you do have to kind of know your role there. But like professional ranks, you're still getting well, I guess you're getting paid, but like they're getting paid paid. I don't know how much a, oh Elijah Pritchett is making, but 
this is like the first case that we've seen of a guy being somewhere, thriving, leaving, and then coming back. So this is new <laughs> even in this forever changing landscape. <laughs> he just hit Iowa with a psych. <laughs> the the fact that he committed there for so long, flipped on signing day, Bruh. was an all American, freshman all American, and then gives him hope again and comes back and then he leaves. That's toxic. Like, is, is he Woo. never welcome back to the state of Iowa? I mean, that's toxic. That that's a lot of burn bridges. Also, bad look for Kirk Ferentz. Not a great look for uh, Ferentz and company. God, I, it almost feels like, and, and Kirk's won a lot of games there, and he'll be a legend there forever. But, like, they're still consistent, like, 10 games a year. Like, what if they had somebody different? Like, do, like I wonder if, I, I, I wonder if ooh, Iowa fans – Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I wonder if <laughs> Iowa fans are like, no, this is the guy that gets us to 10 wins, or if they're like, man, if we had just a little bit more juice. Ooh, that certainly feels like a be careful what you wish for I know, uh, he's been there forever. situation for me. But then again, as yeah, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. Um, all right, when we get back, uh, let's uh, get into some of these other college football stories as well as Clemson – is suing the ACC, and they claim that they have a case. Uh, let's explore it next here on All to, uh, Off the Bench, right? Off the, the Bench the with Hester and T-Bob. That's the name of the show, I believe. Um, All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. Your next vehicle is there at All-Star. Whether it's a new vehicle or Toyota certified used vehicle, we're going to get a great price and still get warranty coverage and peace of mind. Uh, whether you need a rent. Or let's just say you need your car serviced, your current vehicle. I don't care if it's a Toyota. I don't care what make and model it is. I don't care if it's from All-Star. You bring it in the All-Star Toyota Service Center, and you're going to get the best service, whether it's a big accident and you bring in your insurance claim. Uh, look, they got factory parts right there on site. You mentioned OTB, you get $100 towards a deductible. They have the shuttle service to drop you off, pick you back up. Rental cars right there on site. It's all there for you at All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge. It is all right there. Buying new, leasing, or if you're renting. So if you want to buy new, obviously... Everything's going to be available. Same thing in the lease. That's what I do. It's what T-Bob's done. Like, no matter what you need, your family's needs can be met. But also, if you're looking to rent for spring break or whatever trip you have coming up, call Miss Lisa Sessions today. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford has $7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. $7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip Cyrus Stumps, your fruits are planted deep inside of me. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore to run wild and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. 
There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tigers. Welcome back Off the Bench! Clemson on Tuesday became the second ACC member to take legal action against the ACC in uh, hopes of getting out of the ACC, of course, um, from my reading about this, uh, we all know that FSU has been battling the ACC about the exit fees and grant of right agreements and whatnot. Um, but they've been doing it in a very public manner, right? They've been kind of shouting it from the rooftops. Uh, reportedly, Clemson's legal team has been operating in the shadows more. Now, Jake, can you confirm this? I remember hearing that to study the ACC's agreement... Yes you have to actually go to the ACC's offices. You have to go to league headquarters, and you have to look at it there at the headquarters. Yes. You can't get a copy of it. You can't take it and go home and do your homework and bring it back. You have to go to the league office. I mean, am I the only one that is just deeply tickled by that? Oh. That is so funny. That's like Nicolas Cage National Treasure type stuff. Like, they got to steal the grant of rights so they can figure out how to get out of it. What it really reminds me of, Thinking about Clemson's lawyers operating in the shadows, Taylor, you'll appreciate this now, that you're a Lord of the Rings boy. In the in Fellowship of the Ring, when Gandalf is trying to ascertain the nature of, uh, of, of Frodo's ring or Bilbo's ring at the time, and he rides to Minas Tirith, and you see him in the Minas Tirith libraries, right? He's deep in the bowels of the keep, and he's like wreathed in pipe smoke, and he's shuffling papers. And blah, blah, blah. Like those are Clemson's legal team trying to find any loophole to try to get out of the ACC. And they say that they found it because they say that the ACC is erroneously representing the nature, the binding nature of the agreement. And that in doing so, they are hindering Clemson's ability to negotiate with other conferences, um, TV deals. So they're basically saying that, look, the ACC saying they have us locked up when we don't think they do, and because of that, other suitors and parties and conferences won't talk to us because they think we're locked up. So the question becomes, what's the angle? How, where, how is Clemson claiming this? Where is the erroneous angle? And tell me if you think this is enough, Jake. Basically, um, Basically, they are saying that the grant of rights agreement should only apply to members while they're in the conference. They're also arguing that the withdrawal fee, if you leave the conference, should not be enforceable. But what they're mainly saying is, because they would pay that fee if they had to. Yeah. What they're mainly saying is, if we leave the ACC, we should no longer be beholden to that grant of rights agreement. Oof. So there's been multiple schools for multiple years that have tried to find the loophole to get out of the grant of rights. And everyone that you talk to says that the ACC, if they did anything right, it was writing these grant of rights. But if these two teams, CBA, feel like that they have found it, which it kind of seems like they have, then maybe that is going to be something that they can get out of it. And then they're like, what? We're not in the conference. We don't have to pay anything. What are you talking about? Well, I wonder if they have found it. That's where I think not being a lawyer it, hurts. It kind of feels... <laughs> Well, it hurts in a lot of ways, yeah, that's, that's but it true. does feel like they found something that they feel confident about. Well, they for, found their angle. That's what I'm saying. For their first State Clemson, angle. so if they feel like they can get out and also challenge the exit fee and challenge anything that the ACC throws at them, then 
whatever they've been looking for for a long time for multiple years maybe they did find something so but there's also been a report over the last couple of days that the Big Ten and the SEC they actually they view an ACC program as the next major expansion in conference realignment yeah but it's not Florida State or Clemson it's actually North Carolina so from the Big Ten and from the SEC, apparently there's been whispers of if we add a team from the ACC, we would value North Carolina over Clemson and Florida State. So where do they fall in all this as well? Yeah, I mean, they, and, and you know, I, I mean, there's even you know, I, I know that Virginia is attractive as well because these are TV markets that they're not in currently and they want to get to. It's not all just about the brand. It also becomes complicated because any team that you do add is in another team that you have to pay. Um, right, so the pie gets smaller for everybody. Uh, now, granted, maybe in the far flung future, the pie gets larger because the league overall is more attractive. And and you'd probably see something like what you saw with Washington and Oregon, right? Where what for the first two or three years they're getting less than the other Big Ten schools, yeah. And then eventually they'll get the full for the Big Ten for six years. Oh wow, six years. Okay, so, so pretty, pretty so some very long views uh being taken on this so again what the acc says is the acc's position regarding the grant of rights depending on the obligations owed by its members to the conference is um basically they they just say it's ironclad right they, they they've agreed to it they they re-upped in 2013 2016 as well um and clemson's exact claim is quote properly understood the contractual obligations of the conference did not include providing media rights to games played by a school after that school exits the conference. So uh, if they were to pay the withdrawal fee and leave the ACC, they'd be $140 million. And what Clemson's arguing is they'll do that, and then you should not be beholden to the grant of rights. We will see what the court um, has to say about that. But it's, you know, it's, you know these lawyers are going to find some angle, yeah, and they, maybe this works. I don't know. Maybe they said, you know what, we'll come to the league office, and we'll set up shop. We'll be there all week long. Like We're going to find this deal because right now, T-Bob, there is a crossroads in, in what you want to do. Because if I'm either one of those teams or North Carolina, I'm looking at, man, wait a minute. The SEC Big Ten, they get that many automatic qualifiers. We only get two. And, in fact, we just got left out of the playoff this last year. Are we only going to fall – farther down than we currently are right now because it doesn't feel like we can go up any. So well, I want to get out right now before all this takes place. Yeah, the timing of this is not by accident because in this new 14-team playoff, the two lesser conferences are literally getting half the revenue per school that the that the big boys are. And it's very tough. Uh, next, to, It's impossible. Anybody can appreciate this. Somebody's telling you, hey, you have to compete at the level of these other guys, but you get half the resources. Like, yeah, of course, that's going to be untenable. Uh, the question is, if Clemson and FSU get out, is that the death of the ACC? By extension, what does it do to yeah. the Big 12? Uh, let's bring it down next here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. 
Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched... All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. My hair is unsettling right now. I'm very happy that I'm going to get a haircut after the show. You do a lot of funny things with those. It almost looks like a helmet, like a bull cut. And then I'm going to go like straight Karen immediately right here, or maybe a little emo. Look like Jimmy Butler. Isn't Jimmy Butler in like a new like Newfound Glory video or something? Is Newfound Glory still a band? I don't know. Welcome back, OTB. Uh, if you're listening on radio, you go to youtube.com slash 104.5 ESPN if you uh, want to see what we're talking about. Um, it's giving panic at the disco. Is that what it is? Is that the Jimmy Butler video? Oh, or are you is saying it? that's what there's that's the vibe? No, I'm just I'm saying doing. I'm just um, this is the vibe. Okay. Oh goodness. Actually, that's 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 what I forgot that he had the big beehive on top. But have you ever seen have you guys ever seen this? I don't know if there's cursing in it, but back in the day, Sky Vodka gave Zach Galifianakis uh money to make a commercial, but or maybe it was Tim and Eric. But the only way that they would agree to it would be if Sky Vaga had absolutely no input whatsoever on what they were going to make. It might be worth watching in our number three. He's in a Fall Out Boy video. Uh, Butler is. Love there it. There you go. That is giving a little bit of Fall Out Boy, too. Um, all right. So, uh, it seems like... Okay, it seems like chat is telling me that there seems to be a lot of uh, legal momentum that the NCAA will lose this case against Clemson. If that happens, Jake, because, you know, I kind of championed the 14-team playoff as, if nothing else, at least it's going to hold college football together yeah. as we know it for, like, a few more years and, and, and you know, for all of its imperfections. And, well, I'll accept whatever happens. Like, I, I don't know that I want to rush into just the two Super League setup. Like, I think it's really cool being able to watch the Big 12 every week and know that, like, playoff spots are going to be on the line. That makes me happy because that's good football. They're all, 
Like, they may not be on the level of SEC or the Big Ten, but they're all equal with each other. So if you win that, that's still impressive. So I don't want the sport to fall apart. But if Clemson and Florida State gets get out, it's almost impossible to think that that's not the, the end. Yeah, but one of the things I was telling you about the other day when we were talking about 14-team playoff, there's going to be teams that feel slighted because the SEC and the Big Ten, they get more automatic qualifiers. And it's like, well, okay, I'm not – me as a program, I am not going to feel like I'm less than. So if I'm Clemson, if I'm Florida State, if I'm North Carolina, ACC, we're not okay with this. We are not going to accept this. Now the Big 12 teams, they feel like they are okay accepting that because we haven't heard anything from them. They feel like they are happy right now. The ACC and their teams don't feel like that at all. Well, the big boys don't. But a lot of those ACC teams, I think, knew they had to take it. Because it was basically this or nothing. But even everybody in the Big 12, like we haven't heard from any of those schools. Well, no, because they should be happy, bro, because they're the big win. They, they are, I mean, Brett Yormark is secretly one of the true geniuses in all of this. I mean, he's taken a, 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 a conference that was pronounced dead, saved it from death, and despite not having any major superpowers, has equivalent to what the ACC has. Despite not having a Florida State or Clemson, like Brett Yormark has operated so shrewdly, and yet it could be out of his control if it all falls apart. Um, y'all know I'm going to be a little, I did it on Snaps today, but I'm going to be a little pretentious here. Y'all know one of my quotes, one of my favorite quotes ever is about precedence, okay? And it's from, uh, I found in the book Storm for the Storm of Mike Duncan, which you like Roman history, is great. But it's from this guy, Valeus Paterculus, and it's talking about precedence. Precedents do not stop where they begin. But however narrow the path upon which they enter, they create for themselves a highway whereon they may wander with the utmost latitude. And here's the important part. No one thinks a course is based for himself, which has proven profitable to others. And explore the last few years of college football through this lens. Remember the lightning bolt of news at SEC Media Days, Jake, when we learned that Oklahoma and Texas are going to leave the Big 12 for the SEC? Yeah. Something that felt unfathomable at the time, and there was a lot of negative reaction, a lot of anger. Um, but you know what it's proven to be and will prove to be? Profitable for Texas and Oklahoma. And so, again, no one thinks a course is based for himself, which has proven profitable to others. So even though only two teams started this thing, next – it's four teams leaving from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten. And then it's four teams leaving the Pac-12 to the Big 12. And then it's the death of the Pac-12. And now it's teams wanting to leave from the ACC and potentially the death of the ACC. So, again, like this this, this, this precedent that has been set is getting wider and wider and wider. And if, if they win this court case, it kind of feels like it's over. I don't know what happens to the 14-team agreement. I mean, does the Big 12 still hang on or something? I have no idea, but there are um, – right when you think – I thought maybe you were getting a little stability, it looks as uh, unstable as ever. Uh, hour two in the books. Coming up, hour three, we're going to get some bracket talk. Keep it locked, OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Rejuve me medical. Restore me. Refuel me. Rejuve me. You need somebody. I was going to say he's going to fight for you. It's a coordinated rate. Um, you need somebody who's going to help you treat the untreated effects of aging, right? Because obviously my brain's not working. That could be that's one of the issues. Mood and memory problems, insomnia, weight gain, um, lack of energy, uh, lack of drive, uh, both sexual and just normal. Um, why not go to Rejuve Me? Get the free conversation. Get your labs drawn and let them customize the plan for you. Maybe it's HRT. Uh, maybe it's semaglutide, maybe it's B vitamin shots, maybe it's any of this or none of it. They'll have a plan for you. Rejuvenate Medical. They will have a plan, but you can't execute that plan if you don't go get the consultation set up. So go get it set up today on the website, top right corner of the website. Request a consultation. RejuvenateMedical.com, RejuvenateMedical.com. Power up your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard, or playing hard. Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Go 
Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. on Wednesday, March 20th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 70 in hour three of today's show. We'll talk some NCAA March Madness bracket as well as a little LSU football and maybe some NFL news sprinkled in there. If you missed hours one or two of the show, you can catch them in the on-demand section at 1045ESPN.com. You can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 1045 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. Let's go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Abear. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Dude, welcome back. OTB Hour 3. TJ Galagic Taylor hanging out. Um, I thought you were going to go with a Robert De Niro impression there. No, I was just doing a facial. Like I was face, doing a yeah. facial Robert De Niro impression. I wasn't doing um, the can vocal you do, impression. Can you do a vocal one? A little bit. Uh, let me... Let me think. Let me think. Give, I'm, 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 you, need pull, you need me to pull up some Give audio? me a quote. Give me a quote. You talking you, to me. You want to... You talking to me? I don't know. That's don't actually know. not terrible. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not. Shut up, Alondra. Uh, crazy stat that Taylor found about first-round quarterbacks. There were five quarterbacks selected in the first round. In the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft. So uh, these guys are all still on their rookie deals, right? Unless they've been extended. Out of those five, 
Trevor Lawrence is the only one that will enter this season as a starter. You've got Zach Wilson, who uh, is, of course, on the Jets, probably going to be traded somewhere. Um, you have Trey Lance, who was always so weird of a pick to begin with, but is now um, on the Cowboys. I forgot that, actually. Um, you have Justin Fields, who you, we have penciled in as Steelers backup, but I don't think that's a guarantee. They, they said he was going to be the backup. Um, now That's fine. Let's let camp play out. Well, and, and that's the thing. I, that's why I put entering the season. Yes, entering. No, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. It doesn't change the dynamics of it. You have Justin Fields on the Steelers, uh, not on the Bears. Uh, and then you have Mac Jones, whose career after being like, okay, year one, has taken a complete nosedive. It is now actually backing up Lawrence in Jacksonville. Um, and you know what's funny about this? It's not going to change a thing. Teams are still going to draft the hell out of quarterbacks in the first round because you, you just have to get a quarterback and you have to try to find one. And unfortunately, um, it's just a position that is nearly impossible to predict how they're going to do on the next level. There's just too many variables in play. Yep. Again, right? Like, look at Brock Purdy, right? Why Why is Brock Purdy so good, but Ian Book sucks? When in college, I mean, man, Pur- Purdy was, I guess, a bit better in college. But remember, Purdy came off of a very disappointing senior yeah. year. Purdy's junior year was Yeah, it good. was awesome. Yeah. yeah. But senior year, him and Brees Hall didn't do anything. Mm-mm. And look at him in the league, right? So it's it's just, you, you never know. And so even though numbers like this are shocking, it's not going to stop a ton of quarterbacks from being taken this year or probably even next year. In, in a draft when there's like not supposed to be a bunch of quarterbacks, you just take him because you have to. I will still never understand why the Niners did what they did with Trey Lance. Maybe they like chasing the ghost of Josh Allen or something. But um, but you're gonna, but yeah, but teams are going to continue to do so. Well, it's funny you say that. Like, we were talking to break like Mitch earlier. Mitch Trubisky and the Bears, to be fair, too. Looking at Mel Kuyper's recent mock draft, five QBs in the top 12 now. What? Which is great if you're not a quarterback drafting team because that's created massive value for you if it actually goes down like that. There's no way. There's no way, right, Jake? Uh, it could. Five in the top right? 12? I mean, Minnesota needs a QB now. So... Oof, yeah. Team, you to tell me team. nearly, so over 33% of the teams ahead of the Saints are going to be picking from the same position in the Saints, a uh, position the Saints aren't even interested in? That feels like massive value for every team who's not picking a well, quarterback. Just think about it. Top three, we know. Bears, Commanders, yeah. and then JJ. Yeah. They're taking QBs. And then they, got, they got JJ. So JJ, so JJ continues to. Everyone right. believes yeah. that the Vikings are going. That's why they got the other first round pick to be able to trade into a position to draft JJ McCarthy to be their quarterback of the future. And then it falls on what we talked about, Taylor. If Bo Nix goes to Denver, yeah, and a lot of people are Our saying, Penix. "Well, that's high for Bo Nix." It might be, but if you think about it, he's a really good fit for Sean Payton offense. He's really good at those short to intermediate passes. So mm. it's like you reached on him, but if you think that guy's right for your system, like. Did you actually reach on him? And they got. I don't 12 know if right I now. believe that Bo Nix is a good NFL fit quite yet. For for Peyton's system, he's no. I get what you're getting at, yeah. but it just it it all felt a little too uh, edgeless in college, a little too safe. Great numbers, but when you actually watched him, there wasn't a lot of um, sharpness or not sharpness. Like there, there there wasn't a lot of danger. To him, you you didn't feel particularly threatened by Bo Nix. And maybe, maybe maybe I'm being unfair to him. Well, my thing just is just compared like, to like Denver a Penix, where it felt later. like you could get sniped at any time by Penix and those yeah. Re- or, yeah by Penix and those receivers. But Nix just felt a little antiseptic in that regard. Well, that's the thing. Like, can you get him later than twelve? Because I mean, they're mid second round, or could you trade back? Well, that's well. See, so that okay. So that so then we get into a couple of things, which that is the push pull of why there's runs on quarterbacks. Because if you were a team that needs one, can you afford to wait? Because mm-hmm. if you do, what if somebody's like, oh, wait, I can get Knicks here? Like, well, I might as well. Um, and then also, trading back always sounds great, except you have to have somebody that wants to trade up. And if you're picking in the middle of the first, like Jake said, if, if, if there's a player, that's your best bet. If there's a player on the board that you know, which is why people are always sitting up smoke screens and lying about what they actually want, 
If there's a player on the board that's maybe falling a bit and you know this other team wants him, that's how you maybe find a partner. But nobody's, it's not just like some automatic, oh, I'll just trade back thing where it's like, okay, well, why am I going to give you resources to move up to get the 14th pick or the 12th pick? Well, not only that. So Denver's at 12, right? Here's why they're not going to move back. The Raiders are at 13. Yeah. The Raiders need a QB as well. I mean, right now, the, right now their QBs are Aiden McConnell and Gardner Minshew. They yeah. need a QB. They don't need a quarterback. They got two beasts, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, yeah. So, I, I mean, in that, and now in that regard, maybe like if you're in front of, uh, if, if you're ahead of 12, well, then maybe the Raiders, you know, maybe that's somebody that you can dance with if you want to trade back uh, because they want to go try to snipe one of those QBs. Um, mm. So, again, if you draft a quarterback in the first round, there's a very good chance he's only going to disappoint you. But unfortunately, you don't really always have a choice if you need a quarterback, unless you're the Saints, and then you just don't ever draft one. You know? 1973, was it? For the last time? It was Arch Manning. Archie Manning. I'll take Arch Manning. 50 years? I won't take Arch Manning. Not in NCAA football? Mm -hmm. Can't. Can't take him in yeah, NCAA can't football. Take him. Lame. I just want to focus on the football on the field. Just, then just be in the game, dude. With then all, just be in the game. You've created a story. Anyway, yeah. sorry. With all these quarterbacks, like to your point, T-Bob, being taken in front of you, it's going to have somebody fall to you. Yeah. You're going to have the ability, like, if it's, again, is it a position of need or is it a, hey, Roma Dunze is on the board at 14. Receiver might not be our biggest need, but how do we pass up Roma Dunze? Mm -hmm. I don't think Dallas Turner – We'll fall there, I think, eight to Atlanta. Feels like it's almost already happened. But if he does, then, like, yeah, you can say, you know what? This is a deep tackle draft. Let's go. We, we cannot pass up on this player. We'll get a tackle in the second round. The um, And that's exactly what happened with Marshawn Lattimore, remember? Yep. In the Lattimore draft, there was that crazy run on offensive players that nobody really had mocked or expected. And so all of a sudden, a guy in Lattimore who was like a consensus top 10 guy you got a 13. I'm like, oh, okay. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Um, uh, Nookie says, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Nick's was balling until those final two games. No, I'm, I'm saying, look, and, and I, I'm probably being a bit unfair to Nick's. I'm just saying that uh, a lot of, he had overwhelming statistical success, right? And yes, he can move with his feet, but it wasn't just, it's not the air yards, right? It was it wasn't the deep gashes that Penix would send into you or that even Quinn Ewers like I, I you know what I still think about probably once a week? The Quinn Ewers ball to Xavier Worthy in the Alabama game. Where he threw it into space and it dropped right into Xavier Worthy's yeah. lap in the back of the end zone. Like I kind of feel like Bo Nix could never. Um so that that that's all I mean. And and and, and to be fair to your point, I'm I'm probably being a little too harsh on Knicks, but I would just feel ooh, I'd feel a little wary if I was if I was drafting that quarterback in the first round. I just I still and I've said it for months, I still don't understand what the problem with Penix is. Again, I know he's left handed and I know there's things that they want to see him do over the middle portion of the football field, but still like I saw him go out there against Texas and be flawless. It didn't happen in the championship game. He had a bad game. There's no denying that. But I saw him against a Texas team go out there and basically be perfect. Yeah. And so I think what he has can translate to the professional ranks. I think what he does outside the numbers is elite. Can he get better in the intermediate stuff? I do think he has that ability. I know he's left-handed. And I'm not saying that he's a top 15 pick. But I think he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. I mean, if I was going to take a risk, I would rather be wrong on Penix and wrong on Knicks. Uh, me personally, you know, if, I, if I'm going to be wrong somewhere, I'd rather be wrong going for the more dangerous guy, uh, than maybe the kind of safer play. All right. Uh, Corlin Jacobs said what Nixon's stats showed and what it looked like when you watch him did not match up. Yeah. It's kind of in his entire career in some ways is on those biggest stages. Um, even though, I mean, he, you know, he, he won some that, 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 Auburn game when he was at Auburn when he played Oregon actually early on it was a he had, didn't have good numbers game, but yeah. yeah he didn't have good numbers but they found a way to win that one um 
He knew he's appendix just always been hurt. Yeah, I mean, the medical's probably the big thing there. Speaking of medicals, Alondra, that's a very funny meme that you just sent to the group text. Yeah, I chuckled back. Who there. loves Monty Python in the quest for the Holy Grail? Anybody? Yeah, it's a good movie. Anybody? Yeah. Great movie. You ever seen it? Yeah. Nope. You ever seen it, Jake? Yeah, Wait, seen, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, um, I'll bite your kneecaps off the night that like they keep injuring and 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 he's just but a flesh wound. Uh, that's basically Chase Young. Wait, don't worry about it. I'm I'm seriously asking because I've never seen this mm -hmm. movie. Is that where Dan Campbell got that from? What? I'll bite your kneecaps yeah, off. You just said no, that. no. I think that's just um. I think that I don't know if it's like some sort of subliminal breakthrough from Dan. But I don't find that Dan used it in a very comedic sense. I think he was just trying to show. But no, maybe, no, no, I mean, no. well, I guess, I mean, kind of, right? Because, yeah, the Black Knight gets his arms and legs cut off. And he's still talking noise. And he's still trying to fight. And he does yell at him, like, come back. I'll bite your kneecaps off. So maybe so. Maybe that's where Man Campbell got it from. You say Man Campbell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He you is, just create a new nickname? He is. I, I thought everybody called him Man Campbell. Oh, I never heard that. Oh, really? I, I like Motor it, though. City. Motor City, Dan. That's what I thought, MCDC. yeah. MCDC. Yeah. Uh, Motor City Man Camel? Sure. No. What? Favorite line, T-Bob, from Monty Pythons? Hmm. I mean, as a kid, it was actually probably just about a flesh wound. I know. But, That's uh, what I was like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I do, in my older age, I love the entire discourse. I don't know that it's a single line, but I, I do love the entire discourse from the beginning of the movie when they have the coconuts and they're wondering how coconuts got there and they get into the, the, the airspeed of a European swallow versus an African swallow. It's fantastic comedy. I should watch Money Python again. I haven't seen it's it in funny, years. It's funny, yeah. I haven't seen it in years. Um, all right, when we get back, more OTB. You want to do some bracketology? Please. Do some picks. It's not bracketology. That's already over. Okay. Joey Brackett's already had. So what is this called? Done that bracket out your bracket. Come up with a term. Filling out your bracket. Mm. Okay, we can workshop it. We can workshop it for sure. All right. We get back more to me. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and eleven thirty the Tiger. Coleman Roofing and Construction. Coleman Roofing and Construction. Louisiana's most reliable, most respected, most complete roofing company. Okay? And when you think of integrity in the work, in the promises, in the follow-through from what they tell you, think about the innovation that it takes to get the job done. Yeah, Coleman's been around for 42 years, y'all, but, but they're still young and they're constantly staying ahead of the curve technology-wise and innovating on their techniques. It's how they've grown to the point where they can handle any size job, commercial or residential. They can handle any job geographically within the Gulf South region and any type of roof that you need installed. Also, they do the interior, right? That's a construction portion. It's not just roofs. They'll fix the inside as well. Coleman Roofing and Construction. Go to the website, ColemanRoof.com, because they are throughout the state of Louisiana, commercial and residential. But when you go to the website, it will see the contact information for your part of the state of Louisiana. So, again, ColemanRoof.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the JimsFirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the JimsFirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big with your help we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish a family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild and even soar you imagined we delivered gold Breck, your number one park system in the nation Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink 
are a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. You got a lot of good Monty Python lines coming in. I thought in your general direction. It's a great one. Your mother smelled of elderberries and your father was a hamster. It's pretty good. I like when he's like, repeat after me, I am an individual. And everybody's like, I'm an individual. I like, um... When the peasant is talking about, like, what is it like? Technically, we live in a monarchical autocracy or yeah. whatever. Like, he's, he's going into, like, deep well, governmental actually, philosophy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bring out you dead. Oh, man. Now, now I may have to watch it again. If I wasn't too busy watching anime, you guys, Ninja Kamui is really good on Max, he guys. Check it out. Me. Somebody just watch one he episode for me, me, please. Watch what? Ninja Kamui. Kam- Kamui, I think is how you would pronounce it. But um, it's on Max. It's only five episodes out. It's just a really, really tight anime. If you like action, like it is sick action. Very cool. Anyway, let's get into, oh man, the whole witch scene as well. and <laughs> A man of science. <laughs> He's like, what if the witch floats if a duck floats? Okay, anyway. Um, bracket talk. How do you want to do this? You want to start in the East? Just go game by game? Like, what do you think? I've, 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 in, in my decade plus of radio, Jake, and you talk more basketball than I, I've never found a great, um, I, I've, I've never fully understood how to, how to break right, so many games. I got it. Uh, okay. So a lot of people, like when you look at the East region, because UConn was the top overall seed, mm-hmm. you think that they would get actually the easiest region because that's what that is supposed to be. And it is, in fact, not that at all. Look at all the conference champions that they have in their region. They've got UAB, they've got Auburn, they've got Duquesne, Mm. they've got Illinois, they've got Iowa State. They have five conference champions, actually six if you throw in Drake. So they got, and Yale would be seven, so they got nothing but conference champions in the East. And so what was supposed to be the easiest is, in fact, maybe the most difficult. But UConn, as we know, they won it a year ago, but like Auburn as a four seed, that is going to be salty. Illinois as a three. Iowa State looks like they're playing as well as any team in the country. They just just throttled Houston in the Big 12 championship game, and so that is going to be a very difficult region. And then you look at some like North Carolina. They're in the West. North Carolina got the last number one seed, and there's not a lot of juice. Like Even as a four seed, Alabama is so streaky that you really can't count on them. You look at the two in Arizona, same situation, T-Bob. They can be really good, but also when you look at the losses they've had, and they've had eight of them, 
they have some really ugly losses in there as well. So if you're looking at which region is going to be kind of the group of death, like we say in soccer, I actually think it's going to be the East, the East. and which should be the easiest. Yeah, it makes sense. Too many. I mean, the conference winner things makes a ton of sense, right? Because, uh, and I'm guessing these are all teams that won the conference, maybe despite at least the bigger ones, despite not being the best regular season conference team. Right, so, so that's how they end up in the East because it either puts them right. in or bumps them up. So I believe UAB finished third in the American, but they won the conference yep. tournament. You look at Yale, they obviously won the Ivy League, a one-bid league. You look at Duquesne, they won the A-10. Illinois won the Big Ten. Uh, Drake won the Missouri Valley, and then Iowa State wins the Big 12. So, yeah, conference tournament champions, but still – Tournament champions playing what? Their best basketball yep. right now. That's why they get on a the heater. They get into the NCAA tournament. So, um, you said your bracket. You said it was going to end up being pretty chalky. It is. It is. So, like, if we just take a look at the, let's go Elite Eight, because you're right. Like, if we go pick for pick, obviously that's going to drag out, and we don't need to hear, it, like, any analyst of Iowa State, South Dakota State. Sorry to the Jackrabbits. So oh, Jack you, Rabbit, look you, just, you had your South Dakota State uh, sweater on yesterday, or is that North Dakota State? North Dakota State. Yeah, my bad. That right. feels like they would be very offended by that. Yeah, although I yeah, just that's, you know. that's on me. So you look at my Elite Eight. I am going to go out of the East, UConn and Iowa State. So the one and two. That's chalky. And you look at the West. I'm going to go UNC, who is the one, and Baylor, who is the three. Chalky there as well. You go to the Midwest, Purdue and Tennessee, the one and two seed. The only switch up I really have is in the South. I've got Houston and Florida as a seven seed in my Elite Eight because you look at Florida, I feel like they should have been a five. Gonzaga should have been a seven, but those teams got flipped. I feel like Florida should have been ahead of South Carolina as well out of the SEC. South Carolina gets a six. Florida is a seven. So if they win in round one, you're probably going to play a very banged up Marquette team. Marquette is incredibly injured. They are not healthy right now. They're one of the most injured teams heading into this tournament. So even as a two seed, I like Florida. And Kentucky's the three seed in the South. I like Florida over Kentucky. Florida is the number one rebounding team in the country. What? Number one rebounding team in the country. They're a seven seed. They're dangerous as hell. I've got them all the way in the Elite Eight. Um, do you feel like, because you know how generally these things go, uh, so somebody talked to me about the paradox of choice the other day, which I, I, I thought was very interesting, right? And it was kind of, uh, we were talking in, I guess the paradox of choice is just simply that you would think, right, you want more choices, right? Um, but as we see when it comes to like streaming and everything, the more choices you get, it actually becomes harder to choose, right? I think we've all probably sat there for like 30 minutes and watched 10,000 Netflix trailers as we try to... Yes. And then we're like, okay, now we're out of time. You know, <laughs> now, like, now it's bedtime. <laughs> yeah, now, now, now we actually don't out. have time to watch anything. <laughs> uh, so in that same way, do you think you almost yeah. suffer from the paradox of knowledge? Where you have yeah. so much knowledge about this that right. it's hard to discern, okay? Like, like it's almost easier to just put on a blindfold or do the best mascot thing and just... Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, T-Bob, I certainly think you're on to something because, like, for me, I start getting into the analytics and I look at the top five defensive teams in the country. That's Houston, St. Mary's, UVA, who lost last night, wasn't even competitive last night in Dayton, Iowa State, and McNeese. Those are the top five defensive teams in the country. All five made the tournament and one's already out. Like, you look at the offensive leaders. You've got Alabama, Kentucky, Arizona, Wright State, Sanford. Four of those five made the NCAA tournament. So, like, when you know that... You're looking at it, Florida being the top rebounding team in the country, along with Texas A&M. It's like, do you look too mi too much into the analytics of stats yep. like that? Because, again, UVA, number three in defense in the country, they got housed last night by Colorado State in the play-in game. So sometimes you can fall into that. Now, like I fall more into like the top rebounding team isn't as important as me thinking Florida should have been a five, not a seven. Yeah, I'm fair. that's fair. That's fair. I agree with that. I mean, I understand like – that that's where maybe your knowledge comes in handy is when you think about teams being potentially underseeded. Um, like Houston does play like so Houston style of defense too. Like it's hard for me not to fall in love with them in a tournament format because if you play them in the second game of a weekend, not the first game where you have some to, some time to prepare, but yeah. second man, that's a tough defense mm -hmm. to get ready for. You don't have the time, right? You're going to do everything you can, but if I'm let's say Nebraska beats A and M. 
well, man, I, I was ready for A&M, but I can't get ready for Houston in a couple of days. Like, that is going to be very difficult. Like, Houston's the top defensive team in the country by almost two full points. Uh, wait, so Chad's telling me Virginia scored 13 points in the first half last night? Yeah, they they, they were atrocious. Like, How is that? All, them offensively is... How is that possible? Uh, just go watch them. They're hard to watch. I mean, I guess Honestly, they've won championships. Kind of no, I was going to say, they won championships yeah. being hard to watch offensively, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's still... Yeah, Trey Murphy ain't there no new, more, though. That's a new low. Uh, yeah, Malcolm Brogdon ain't coming through that door. Shout out JC's oh, finest. Good player. Um, Accutant Baton Rouge, AccutantBR.com. Uh, all your AC, heat, and electrical needs. Uh, chances are you may be, you know, maybe turn on the heat the last couple nights, but that's going to be it. Uh, you, you gotta make sure that AC is good to go. If you get hit with any problems, you want to work with Agitemp. Um, go look at the online reviews, guys. Again, service to the highest degree is not just a uh, a punny slogan. Okay, it is their core ethos. It is their mission statement. It is their why. If I was a motivational speaker, that's what I would tell you. It's why they do what they do. Uh, yes. To make sure that their customers are um, are consistently satisfied and taken care of. And I I can sit here. And I can tell you about it every day, and I do, but there's nothing like experience in it. So next time you have an issue, hit up Agatem, have them come out your home, and you're like, okay, T-Bob, I get it now. Also, remember, whole home generators, they're your answer. If you want it for storm season, go ahead and get that free estimate today. Um, Rohit Calvacava says, didn't Virginia not score for 14 minutes straight in the second? What? What? Uh, Ian they Todd. were airballing free throws. T. What? It was it how are was you so a bad. Division One basketball player and you airball a free throw? That yeah. should be that should be from a program that won a Natty not that long ago. I think well, I think, I think you immediately good too. Yeah. Like even when they don't win the Natty. Yeah, like, now this is who they are. They're yeah. always good defensively and offensively. Like they, they struggle. And when you have a Trey Murphy, obviously that's where your offense comes from. But when you don't have a guy like that, an NBA dude, then you're going to be a team in Virginia that if the other team's hot. You're going to lose like they did last night. Yeah, I think I think if you airball a free throw as a yeah. Division One player, you get your scholarship revoked immediately. What's and the equivalent in, in college football? It. It's it's tough because I don't know. Is there as much of a gimme? I mean, I don't I don't know. A kicker, I don't know. A kicker missing an extra point. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably actually yes. I would say from a percentage standpoint, actually, if you were to look at air balls on free throws and missing extra yeah. points. I mean, even probably air balls on free throws is a little true. more rare. True, true, true. But still, that that's probably about close as you're going to get from a percentage standpoint. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we all remember Virginia losing as a one of the 16. Yeah, um, they were the first to well. do it. And Purdue's like, hold my beer. Let me do it as well. And Purdue lost to a team in Fairleigh Dickinson that, remember, didn't even win their conference tournament. They got in because of a technicality and they lost that, that 116 matchup. Now, if... Oh, gosh, this is going to sound weird because I've got them winning it all, but like Stetson's the only 16 that I could see even challenging a one against UConn. The Fighting Bennett's? Or the Hatters. What is Stetson? Is it the Hatters? Hatters. Yeah. Pretty good college baseball program. Yeah, they do. I was about to say yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nookie says in the chat that Virginia baseball scored 15 runs last night. <laughs> So a, they, they outscored uh, a half of a tournament NCAA game. That's mind-boggling. Who do we have? I mean, I'm the only Matt one. Matt says, I think Bama gets bounced by winners of St. Mary's or by the winner of St. Mary's and Gulf Coast. Uh, yes. Whoever wins that 5-12 matchup, St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, I feel like has oh, a Grand really Canyon. good My shot bad. to beat. Alabama. Alabama is so streaky. Now, when they're on, obviously they can score with the best of them, but if they're not, they don't play enough defense. You and St. Mary's, St. Mary's, T. Bob, going back to the analytics that I'm probably doing too much uh, diving into, St. Mary's is the second best team defensively in the country. They are gritty as hell. And they might be from Southern California. They might be from the LA area. And I know you don't want to give over to that kind of grit, but mm. they are gritty. When you watch them play, they bog the game down. They take possessions away from you, and they're efficient offensively. So they're not like Virginia. They got guys that can shoot the basketball. St. Mary's, if, if they get past Grand Canyon, Bryce Drew is the head coach of Grand oh, Canyon, okay. by the way. If they get past them, it's an intriguing matchup with uh, North Carolina if they do meet in the Sweet 16. We were talking about it yesterday. You made us pick a, a double-digit seed for your – 
for your Cinderella. I took Grand Canyon because, like you mentioned, yeah. the toss up and and they're not a they're not dissimilar that much to St. Mary's. Like I think it's a toss up game, and like you said, like Alabama guys, they average ninety points a game. They give up almost eighty two a game. And then Jake, like Jake said, they're top five in the country defensively, but Grand Canyon as well only gives up about 67 a game. So, like, whoever Alabama gets in that second round matchup is going to be tough. That's crazy. Uh, Houston, it looks like Houston, UConn, and McNeese. Oh, no, and James Madison, the only teams to win 30 games in the country this year. James Madison, uh, football and basketball, I think they've lost a combined, like, Four games. Ah, uh, true. Uh, James Madison, Wisconsin, twelve five. Who you got in the James what, Madison? Call it the PFT or the uh, the the PMT bowl? Yeah, like yeah, that's a good point. Twelve uh, five has always been a place where you're going to see upsets. Although I don't think we've gotten one in like the last three years. It's actually come from the thirteen four matchups where we've seen more upsets. But with these twelve five matchups this year, you almost feel like you can guarantee one's going to happen. Oh like, yeah, like you maybe, look at maybe like, multiple because like we were saying, Grand Canyon St. Mary might be a toss up game. That's a twelve five. McNeese Gonzaga, McNeese Gonzaga, James Madison, Wisconsin, even UAB San Diego State. Yeah, UAB could win that game. Yeah. They're a good. They're a good program. Eric Gaines, former LSU Tiger. Yeah, that's what Chant was saying. I got UAB on there. You know why? Dragons. AK Adam Kennedy. Uh no, just the Dragons. Blazers. Yeah, it was. You're right. Yeah, but it is. It a is a dragon shooting flames. They probably should have gone just with dragon. Yeah, yeah. It's a tight mascot. It um, is great. Trent Dilfer. Yep. Right? Head coach. Yeah. All right. When we get back, uh, more turning talk. Also, I have a very funny story uh, from yesterday that was kind of a low moment for your boy that I want to get to. Uh, keep it locked right here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. Go to allstartoyotabatonrouge.com, allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. Your next vehicle is there at All Star. And check it out, man. You get one of these new ones since it's going to be a hybrid, and uh, it's awesome, dude. The amount of money that you save at the gas pump is great. Like, it, 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 it's kind of wild in that it feels like it makes it literally makes your monthly payment less, right? Because you're saving so much money. So, whether you want to join me in the MVG with like a minivan, maybe with a luxury SUV like a Sequoia, big old truck like a Tundra, smaller truck like a Tacoma, uh, RAV4, Highland, it's all there at All Star Toyota. See what they can offer you today, All Star Toyota, BatonRouge.com. It is all there. So no matter what you're looking for, if you're looking for a van, multiple trucks, multiple mid size SUVs, full size SUV, multiple sedans, multiple hybrids, doesn't matter what you're looking for, they've got you covered in all three things we talk about buying new, leasing, and renting. Go to the website, allstartoyotofbatonrouge.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. 
We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Jake, how about this? Uh, the incestuous world of uh, college sports athletic directors continue. As uh, Pete Thamel tweeting 38 minutes ago, Nebraska is finalizing a six-year deal to make Washington AD Troy Dannon the new athletic director. Um, didn't Dannon just oh, from leave? Tulane, to, right? Yeah, he came. Remember, he did great at Tulane, and then but didn't he just leave like a few months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that that's what people when transfer portal exactly. stuff. That's that's the thing that people that are against it. That's what they leave out when they're arguing this. Yes, exactly. Right and again. again. That's not um, even saying like right, wrong, or indifferent. This happens in at the AD level, president level, head coaching, assistant coaches, all the time, and now it's just happening with players. Again, no one considers a course based for himself if it is proven to be profitable for others. So, but but help me out here. Okay, you had. So, what kicked this all off? Uh, you had what's his name that used to be at home. We had Ross Bork, Bjork leave. Hey, where did where did Washington's AD go though to to hire Troy Dan in the first place? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. But yeah, Bjork leaves A and M, goes to Ohio State. A and M hires Trev Alberts from Nebraska. Nebraska hires away. Troy Dannon, who had just gotten to Washington after Washington's AD went where? Huh. Anyway, I don't remember. Incestuous. Very, very funny stuff there. Um, hey, I do want to remind you about the MMR group. If you're looking to ignite October your career. October the 7th. Sorry. October the 7th. Is when Troy, when Troy Dannon <laughs> got to Washington. Sorry. Good six off. months on the job there, guys. <laughs> uh, see, that's a job, guys. Okay. You want a career? You want to go check out what the MMR group can offer you. We're talking about the largest electrical and instrumentation contractor in the entire nation. And they're headquartered right here in Baton Rouge. they got offices all over the globe. And we have a variety of positions available. Uh, we're so excited they've chosen a partner with OTB. And, um, you know, we would the, the reason why they did it is they want to recruit talented individuals, be it college students, seasoned pros, or if you're just starting out your career, I would love to you for you to explore what MMR can offer you. If, if a dynamic culture, um, if, if great benefits, and if, if just a campus with, a basketball gym and multiple gyms. like it's the facilities are going to blow you away. Just explore it guys. Explore what MMR can offer you apply now. MMRGRP.com. It's MMRGRP.com. Jen Cohen went to USC. Um, that's the AD that, okay, that was the AD at Washington. Washington. Man, everybody just spit swapping at this point. Uh, so I had a, a bit of a funny time yesterday where, uh, my, my daughter's kindergarten class got to go on a tour of the LSU locker room and then the stadium. And that was very cool. Right. And then we had a picnic outside the PMAC, which uh, I actually just realized I saw the North Texas team walk out of the PMAC. So 
little did I know what they were, you know, the impending doom awaiting the Tigers. But um, we have this picnic, and, you know, they only bring lunch for the kids, of course, but I'm hungry, right? And one of the kids uh, that was kind of hanging out with me, I was with my daughter, but then um, his his parents couldn't make it, and so he was just kind of tagging along all day, and it, it, was, it was cool or whatever. Um, but they have these, like, Tasty looking sack lunches, right? <laughs> These cheap sandwiches. And I love sandwiches. You guys. Chris Farley son. I of love babe. sandwiches. And all of a sudden, the kid's like not into a sandwich, doesn't want to eat it, right? He's eating the chips, he's eating the dessert, drinking the apple juice, but that sandwich is just sitting there wrapped up. Now I'm seeing it right next to the teachers, though. So I had a little social insecurity about asking the kid for his sandwich. But I was basically taking care of him all day. And so when it came time to clean up, I was like, oh, here, I got it. And I like jumped into that kid's space, took his trash, and then like a, like a magician, palmed the sandwich and slipped it into my sweater pocket so that uh, I could act like I had thrown it away or act like I wasn't essentially stealing a child's sack lug sandwich. But uh, man, I'll tell you, I felt like Kaiser Soze leaving that place. You know, walking away, taking the sandwich out of my sweater pocket, unwrapping the plastic wrappers on a tasty, cheap white bread hoagie bun. Just a classic ham and cheese. Would I have loved to steal the mayo? Yes, but it was just maybe a little too obvious. But I'll be damned that sandwich didn't go down great. It was so good. Um, but it, it, it did remind me of this this clip from one of my favorite movies ever. <laughs> Somebody stole all our lunches. Who would steal 30 bag lunches? <laughs> Out. Oh, uh, yeah. So, that you know, people always accuse me of being like Chris Farley. I guess, um, you know, I continue to try to operate in the same vein as my muse. What a legend. If you were already on your way out, why didn't you just wait till you were like on your way? Like, were you already leaving? No. So the classes were the class was getting up to go. Oh, it was okay. over. It was over. So again, so you were already gonna leave? Yes. I did not want to ask the teachers to take the sandwich. That felt a little low. I didn't want to ask the kid for a sandwich. That felt a little weird. So I pulled the fake cleanup into uh, palming and sneakily slipping it into my jacket. It was great though. It was really good. Don't worry, I got you. I'll throw it away for you. Um, I love. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. I, I feel like it was just payment for you actually. Being there in my for mind, the student. yes. In my mind, that's how I. That that's how I. Uh, yeah. That's how I justified it. Yeah. Agreed. As well, like his parents couldn't make it, so you're like, hey, I'll you. step up. I'll, I'll step up to the plate. I'll take over, but I'm also going to take your sandwich on the way out. I don't think I look. I don't think I stole the sandwich. To be clear, it was going to go uneaten. No, and, and as we talked it. about with Chef Johnson, like I don't believe in food waste. That's right. And so I was just trying to eliminate a bit of food waste. Yeah. All right. Let me get back. Let's close out the show with a little Ask the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Pinnacle Exterior Construction, PECbuilt.com. Guys, do yourself a favor. Head to the website. Okay? If you need fences, pergolas, bulkheads, outdoor kitchens, head to the website. I mean, the gallery is going to blow you away, guys. The quality of work is next level um in fact next week we're gonna start running some of the video on the house that they built that won all the awards because it's it's a fascinating piece of architecture uh but i want to talk to you about pools okay um pinnacle has these spec pools where you choose templates then you choose detail work so you make the pool your own right um and then in just two weeks and look you can financing options available you can pay for it all up front but in just two weeks you have a pool beginning to end that's the quality you get for Pinnacle, okay? PECbuilt.com. Yeah, not just like a kidney-shaped pool, like multiple options, right? Not just your basic pool. I mean, multiple options, two weeks' time, and that is not lip service. I have seen it happen with my own eyes. PECbuilt.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded. 
because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Beep, 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 breaking news. So the Chase Young deal uh, continues to evolve. We just got new details on it. Um, it is actually essentially a one-year $5 million deal with eight additional million available for per-game roster bonuses. So uh, the five million is guaranteed. It doesn't seem like the whole thirteen is guaranteed, um, unless he is to play. So the Saints did give themselves some injury protection, and it has slightly changed some of my takes from early in the show about maybe the desperation of uh, the two parties. It's a, it's a good good bit. It's a good bit by the um, by uh, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, on three came out with a list of their top SEC coaches. They ranked them one through sixteen now. Um, and I have a lot of quibbles with the list, uh, even though I love Jesse Simonton, did a great job. Uh, but one quibble I don't, or one thing I think they got right, Jake, they have Kirby Smart, number one, because of course. But then they have Brian Kelly checking in right there at number two. Is Brian Kelly actually the second best coach in the SEC? I don't know that I take anybody else over Brian Kelly. I mean, what he's done in his career, multiple levels, multiple stops, what he's already done in two years at LSU – both 10-win seasons after what he took over. Uh, we all remember the Texas Bowl a couple of years ago, so I have no problems with that. There's people behind him that are fighting for that number two spot. Yeah. Um, Lane Kiffin, Kalen DeBoer, and other Eli Drinkwitz, and we'll see if you know Missouri can continue. And look, I'm not saying Eli's two, but I'm saying Eli is working towards in, in that He's group of up. conversation. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I probably got, I got uh, Smart Kelly. Uh, then I think I got, I, I got no problem going to DeBoer three. Um, and then I would go Kiffin four. I know they, they had Sark at four. I think, I think it's a little too early for Sark. I, I think Kiffin's done more Oof. up to this point. Uh, that, that, that's a good, it's a good debate because Sark did exactly what he had to do for Texas as far as momentum heading mm -hmm. into the SEC. 
but like this will be a year. If he replicates what he did a year ago, yeah, then I'll bump then him he's up. firmly in the conversation to be two or three. Yeah. Like Kirby right now is the clear number one because of the close. national championships. Yeah, so um, I think they got that right. Uh, LSU spring ball uh, getting underway once again. Uh, what are we most looking to? I was I, I was talking to some people yesterday and uh, hearing very good things about the new center, DJ Chester. I mean, not just physically imposing and massive, but also very, very smart. And, um, yeah, this LSU offensive line continues to be a strength. You just got to find somebody defensively, dude. That's it. Um, but, again, if you really have the second-best coach in the SEC, and we mentioned how good the recruiting's been and everything else, well, uh, you should be able to figure that out at least so that it doesn't become a complete disaster that ends up tanking the season. Ask the Bench, brought to you by Cole Curse Life, Vizier, Tilted, Blue Moon, Light Sky, Citrus Sweet. Um, is T-Bob the guy who comes to your house and takes the last beer without asking or replacing? To be fair, I, I would not do that. Or not. Mm, I don't know. Somebody's got to take the last one. Somebody does have to. I mean. Um, but I would not do that. Or I'd ask first, at least. Ask the bench. In light of T-Bob's story, will you be more guarded around T-Bob when you have a sandwich? No. No. Again. I'll probably offer her a sandwich. Yeah. I would never eat a, a sandwich in front of T-Bob and not have one to offer him or say, See? hey, do you want to split this down the middle? Very nice. So, um, Ask the bench, favorite part or most interesting aspect of the Cold War? I don't know much about the Cold War. I think all it's, of it is pretty interesting. I think it's all, yeah, I think it's interesting from a spycraft standpoint yeah. and espionage and whatnot. Um, I think it's it, all also, the fact that like we were so openly threatening nuclear war yeah. is insanity. Mm-hmm. Also, we that it was cold like that whole time. That's that's a little confusing. Yeah, that was, I, I mean, where was Phil? Yeah. Where were you, Phil? Where was Phil? He saw his shadow that year. Ask the bench, why are there no major American sports teams called the Dragons? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like dragons are traditionally more European iconography. Given like medieval crests and whatnot, it's a good question though. We got the Prairie Dogs versus Dragons. There was the Seattle Dragons of the XFL, but they weren't one of the franchises that continued. The Kraken, kind of like a dragon. Uh, speaking Mythical of Seattle, creature, yeah. Hashtag Ask the Bench. Are you a sunrise or sunset vibes kind of person? Sunset. Sunset, sunset, yeah, thousand. Per- I love dusk. Sunrise great, but ooh, sunset. We got to watch the sunset in Aruba, right on the water. It was awesome. I've never done that. Thanks, Taylor. You're I'm welcome. just kidding. That does sound great, actually. And um, I'm jealous. Um, ask the bench. Has Jake ever been to La Jolla, California? La Jolla. La Jolla. Uh, Holla at me. Uh, at La Jolla, ball. California. It was about 10 minutes west of where I lived in San Diego. Incredible place. Um, incredible restaurants. And uh, you didn't... My, my best friend, Austin, who's probably listening to the show, he said La Jolla <laughs> the first time that he saw it. So okay. you did better than he did. There we go. So. That's the bench. Worst mascot ever. Arkansas Monticello, the, the Bull Weevils. That's huh. actually kind of tight. Bull Weevils is... Hey, Norse? Isn't Norse. Southern Arkansas Norse the mule riders? I think it's just weird That's to call them cool Norse. Too, like, just actually. call them Vikings or something. Dinosaur most closely related to a dragon? All of them? Yes. Worst mascot. Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, because the yeah, accent yeah, is just like so a red dust type, though. Just like, so it's so unique, lovable, though, you know? though, though. All right. See you tomorrow. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Community, Community Steel. Steel. Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com. Yeah, the Stanford tree is pretty stupid. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. And doesn't even get into, like, so stupid that it's good territory. Eh, kind of does, though. Because it's got googly eyes. You'll have googly eyes when you look at the incredible deals and product that Community Steel is offering you. If you need purlin, tubing, steel building, sheet metal, it's all there for you in Gonzales, Louisiana. And because it's local... Um, and because they make all their own product, they manufacture, right? They go straight from the wholesaler to them making it. Uh, you get the best price point. You also deal with human beings. Imagine that. 
and you form relationships, which help serve you, whether it's your business or personal steel use. Community Steel Co., communitysteelco.com. 225-647-2020. Call them today or go see them in Gonzales, Louisiana. They've been open for three hours already. Go to the website as well to find that location, communitysteelco.com. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected support